Gather round, freaks. It's us, the people over at the show. Hey, did you see this one? The Disco Boys! Whoa! The Disco fucking boys. And we're telling you to gather around the freak zone and get on the internet and get on Twitch and get on down and get on down and get on down because it's time for Hey. Did you see this one? Once upon a time, movie magic was dwindling, and things were changing. And this month, Stephen Waters, and hey, did you see this one, would like to take you back there, take you on a trip down memory lane, to revisit some of their favorite movies from the late 1900s. From cult classics to box office hits, they'll explore the mysticism of this iconic era of film history. Tune in to relive the magic of the previous century in the Nostalgic, the nostalgic 90s. 90s. Hey, did you see this Seems okay. Ooh, get the devil on the phone. It's time again for hey did you see this one it's thursday night you know what that means we're gonna be talking films and talking movies it's a round table chat it's and a Ruby talking show. disco and it's a, hey did you see this one extravaganza it's episode 134 also known as season two episode 34 uh it's a new month last month uh the the clock of time turned a new to a new year for me I'm old now. Now Steve's turned too old. Uh, it is Steve's birthday month. Too old. I think I'm going to be just old enough. You know what they say? Disco is not dead. Disco is life. That's right. Disco is life. And this week on the show, uh, we're talking, we're starting the nostalgic 90s month. And we're talking about mystery men from 1999. My name is Jason R. Phillips. I'm joined as always by my co-host, Steven Jonathan Waters. No. Uh and <laughs> disco boy water disco boy water tony c and, as they call me on the streets and tony b in the sheets whoa, whoa. uh and we're joining this week by fan of the show guest of the show uh former guest of the show dog owner uh <laughs> co-host of stick taps and blood slaps or whatever stitches <laughs> blood <laughs> slaps <laughs> jesus Stick taps and stitches, the hockey podcast. It's no, it's no, no, okay, ah. no, okay. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome uh, back to the show. So welcome, we're just holding welcome. her while all her vomit is being cleaned up and whatnot. Right. If she doesn't so. eat it, yeah, we know what the dogs love eating their own vomit. The dogs just like, like give human. me my vomit. All right, give me that puke. Give me that puke. Anyway, <laughs> she's uh, messed real bad. I can't get my blur on, but whatever. Oh, that's a great background. <laughs> Neither could this movie. They had to settle for Smash Mouth. Am I right? Somebody, you know, it's funny about so that song. Is the music video has scenes from this movie, and also, uh, it also has, like it's made for this movie, and also this movie predates Shrek. I'm pretty sure by two it's, years. Yeah, everybody also predates Rat Race. I believe Rat Never Race has this movie or this song at the end of the movie. Yeah. You know, while they're all diving into the uh, the crowd, 
True. Bonjour. I think you muted um, by accident. Stop. It's not time to be muted. It's time for talking and time for dancing the disco. The dun, dog is dun, taking dun, a bath. Dun, to the disco room. The disco room. <laughs> Uh, Noel, thank you for coming back on the show. It's been a moment. We always love to have you on the show. We're talking Mr. Man. Um, the thing that we do first each and every week is, uh, we play the, we let people know who won the correct movie guesses mini game that we have. So it's time for, Hey, did you guess this one? Congratulations. You have successfully guessed the correct answer, which is the answer you provided. Congratulations! I should have made oh. disco versions of all of the, uh, the you things. Out. I know, I didn't think How about it. How come I can't change my background? You see my HelloFresh menus and like... <sighs> Everybody knows what you're eating. Terrible. Which which HelloFresh did you get? Which These are which from food? like pandemic. They just never came to It just never went away. That's funny. Yeah, actually, um, it's like okay. You know what? Sorry, the segment. I'm just. Gonna... That's okay. That's okay. I wanted. I want to try something new here. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show the viewers because somebody was like, "This should be later in the show," and also is a very uh, visual segment. But you know what? It's not. It's an audio segment. But I'm gonna make it a visual segment. This is what I showed. This is what I put up. I'm gonna start showing. Well, Jason, that's just a couple of forks there. Hey, it's a fork movie. Did you get it? Fork, I'll forks fork movie? I'll give you if you fork get. Thank yeah. you. See, Who's that's right? good yeah. stuff. People <laughs> guessed a lot of really bad guesses this week, but I had I couldn't do it a second day because I did actually get a lot of a lot of bites, and I don't want this segment to be 17 hours long. So without further ado, Chris Murphy, friend of the show, for, future guest of the show, and part of the United Federation of Podcasts. Uh, check his shows out, uh, including... Uh, hold up a movie podcast and uh, trivial debates, which you know we've been on. We're all fans and guests of each other's stuff on the United Federation of Podcasts. Uh, he guessed it correctly, and he just ha put a picture of the tick, uh, from the television show The Tick. You guys remember The Tick? Yeah, sure do. There were two TV shows of The Tick. Which one are you talking Or three? The action or the. I'm referring to the revival cartoon. or the cartoon. Oh, the yeah. There was a third one. What's the third one? They revived the cartoon, did they? There was the Peter Serafinowicz tick. There was the uh, the Seinfeld guy. What's his name? The guy who plays Putty. He played the tick as well for a little while. And then oh, was... that's right. The live action tick from the 90s that was pretty much on at the same time as the tick. Uh... No. Okay. <laughs> we can also talk about Paul Verhoeven. Maybe we should. <laughs> Okay, listen, he, he wanted, it, he just said, I was trying to st stall so I get the picture, but it's on Instagram, so forget it. Uh, a picture of the tick saying spoon. And it's funny, I saw that earlier and I was like, what the fuck does that mean? And now I remember why he sent that. Uh, also, my friend Kyle Mack, aka the rapper Black Rook, uh, he wanted me to promote that Black Rook uh, ECMA nominee also. Pretty good rapper. Uh his black rook album and new video get it better on youtube uh thanks yo uh also he said that not me he said thanks yo not me uh steve broadbent I think you figured that out jason it's okay steve broadbent. that's my <laughs> yeah it's my code i should maybe take it off this is literally the sound of my jacket right now i'm wearing the same thing i wore last <laughs> Yeah, I'm wearing the same thing I wore on the last I'm dressed episode. as a disco boy for those who can't see me, and I'm realizing that it's very loud, so I should maybe take this off at some point. No, it's funny. It adds to the audio okay. uh, version. Steve Broadbent, yeah. also known as Olin's, back from, from he's from Australian, but he's from a friend from Halifax. Uh, he's wanting to say the first night of the shift, the first night of night shift is always the worst. The second night is not much better but it's all gravy after Wednesday. Is that a, I don't know. Is that a reference to this movie? No. Okay. Uh, Mike Gray, somebody from Facebook, uh, co-host. He's the co-host of Gray's Taproom Podcast. I said, what's that podcast about? I'll never listen to it. He said, a comedy podcast that's like having a conversation with your friends at a bar. We tell jokes, talk shit, and just try to have a good time. Well, maybe you should listen to it. Maybe I'll listen. Maybe, to it. I should, maybe all of us yeah. will listen to it. 
we're all gonna let say we're gonna listen to it uh aaron hurdle guest of the show uh fan of the show former guest of the show he wanted to shout out soldier boy hope all is well and then two people on tiktok got it uh they didn't get their submissions in before i did this episode today so their names are named after a book and <laughs> gregory the giraffe so those are the uh, people that got the movie correct this week. I'm all alone on the show now. This is my show. I'm here. Oh. I'm just, I thought maybe we would give you a, a moment to finish your segment. Well, I do have a segment. You put me on the put me on the main stage, buddy. Hey, this is that time of the show once again where I tell you and I look you in the eyes and I say follow us on all social media. You can find us at Hey, did you see this one across? This is your call to action. You can find us on all social media and pretty much everywhere. We frequent Twitch as you're watching us on right now and YouTube as you're watching us on right now, Facebook as you're watching us on right now. But you can also find us on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok and Instagram. So please go over there and follow us there. We we have hundreds of episodes. We have hours and hours of content all for free. We'll never make it not free uh unless we do but that requires you to go follow us it's kind of a vicious cycle all but right like, you're in a vicious cycle right now of talking let's get them to stop everyone stop i'd it. like to also give a shout out to white bed audio whose music we use in the pre-show each and every week uh no i look like one of their right now i look like one of their thumbnails basically. <laughs> you look like um a character an npc in uh grand theft auto vice city Oh. You also look yeah. like the kid in that one meme who's dancing like this, which I think you were doing for a second. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'll take I... all of these as compliments, even if they're meant as insults. I don't insult anybody ever. I don't know. Like, you were insulting how stressed out I was with vomiting dogs and whatnot. I, it wasn't an insult. It was a term of endearment. Um, anyway. Jesus. <laughs> Jason, I love you. You're my yeah. favorite. That's well, what I love you too. Calls I'm sorry that I. Or... I'm just kidding. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm Whoa! Just kidding. I didn't hear that. I was too busy listening to Jason, hoping he was going to compliment me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "I love you too. You're great. You're fantastic." And you know, but but the last two times I've been on the show, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> right before. That's true. Well, yeah. the last time you were on the show, I was like eight seconds before the show. I was like, "You be on." You're like, "I have a migraine," and I was like. But do you want to come on a show? And you're like, fine. <laughs> I had a really bad migraine. migraine again today, and then the dog got sick. It was. And fast. when I asked you to be, when I asked you about this show a few days ago, you're like, I have a migraine. So it seems like you have a perpetual headache. I am struggling. Call me William Nylander. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so... I don't get that. I don't get that reference. Oh, he was out of the playoffs for three games. He had because he had migraines. Oh, because the hockey podcast. And everyone in Toronto is currently in depressio mode. Yeah, because the, the Maple Leafs suck, right? They, they did lose. I don't know. I don't understand sporting events. <laughs> I have a migraine. That's all you need to know. That like yeah, migraines but... are multi-day affairs. And I yeah. feel a little bit better right now because I died and then got vomited on. So. You should um, take a whole bunch of Advil and go into a really cold, dark room. So oh. that's what I did. So <laughs> Dr. Jason's of, advice on my it's not a whole bunch of Advil. It's called there's the multi multi and then the double multi. So the double multi is two Advil and two extra strength Tylenol. And sometimes if you take that at the very beginning, it numbs a little bit. Now the multi multi is when you have to take two and two and then two will leave. And then in two hours you do it again. <laughs> that's too much. Your intestines are gonna bleed. I the pain flames yeah. on the sides of my head I it's not it. recommended no <laughs> what am i supposed to do i have to pot so i have to take a million pills that's cool that <laughs> i mean that you're gonna that you got i know the feet like i don't get migraines anymore but i know that like warm feeling that's just obviously the headache covered over with it feels like my throat. eyes are like melting out of my face like my ears are bleeding. There's pain here. Like this feels like an elephant is like crushing it, and I you're can't gonna, see. It's knocking gonna, into shit. You're gonna kill Steve if we keep talking about. Welcome to headache. Listen, guys, hour. I also get migraines. I know what they feel like, and I'll tell you. Okay, feel a lot like you're dying. 
<laughs> we're giving the audio listener a migraine right now talking about migraines uh I'm but sorry. how about this it's okay uh but how about this uh why don't we talk about our brief history with the film mystery, mystery men i don't know if we've even said the name of the movie yet but here i did are. i said it a couple times okay. it's a, in brief the back of history. a brief history just imagine that with disco music instead. Around here, it's a time-honored tradition to give our guests the first opportunity to give their brief history. So Noel the Bowler, Bowlingston, Cotiff. So tell us about your brief history. Um, I watched this movie when it came out. I don't think I watched it in theaters, but I remember when the Smash Mouth song came out, it was on a high rotation on Much Music. Um, and like everyone in my generation, I watched much music a lot. Uh, so very distinctly remember that this was not from Shrek, that the mystery men are in the video for this. And I think Big Shiny Tunes 4 came out that year and the Smash Mouth song, I believe, was on that. I don't know. Anyway, I could be lying. But um, I've, I like this movie when it came out. Um, it, I remember it fondly. I quote it all the time. It's like one of the movies that I quote all the time. I have it on DVD and I bought that DVD in like the first run of it being on DVD. So I've always had this movie. Um, I haven't watched it in a while though. I think the last time I watched it was with Steven. We watched it. I fell asleep halfway through and then this time around. But before that, it had been like a couple years since I'd watched it. But um, yeah, I think it holds up. There's some stuff that I'm sure we'll talk about that I was just like, I don't remember that. But um, yeah, it's a fun movie. I don't. It got buried. I hate that. But. Yeah, it's it's one of those movies that you wish that it was far better received than it was because it's like such a good. It's a love letter to superhero movies while also being a criticism of of, of them. It's it's like caught in this world between like satire and like straight up slapstick version of of like a tim burton movie there are people who think tim burton directed this movie Idiot. so i have yeah. thoughts about that and i was gonna yeah. wait until we get into the body of the episode but right. i have thoughts about the tim burton i think this is i would confuse it for being directed by Joel joel schumacher before yeah. i confused it for a tim burton <laughs> most definitely yeah it's got that color um, palette of batman and robin same and then nice. there's another guy who only directed music videos. I think, is he the director of Charlie's Angels? But there's like a couple of these guys that are like... Yeah, we'll talk about the director in the director talk segment. The it's, it's Yeah, his name's like a, Blinky a, Diddy or whatever. Pinka Usher. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but yes, that's my brief history. My briefs on history. Steve. Me? Oh, okay. It's your birthday month. You you, you picked it. You oh, don't wait. you picked it. You picked it's it. You also, picked it. <laughs> it's also my birthday. Stephen and I are twins. We're twins. Yeah. Don't twins. Powers activate. Well, happy birthday to Steve and happy birthday to form of loud leather jacket. We're the exact same age. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody once <laughs> told me that you guys have the same birthday, and it was you, Noel, and it was today. It was just now. Uh, so uh, the first time I saw this movie was in the theater. Uh, I was a mega bat boy as uh, throughout the nineties. Um, I, I saw uh, the return of Batman, <laughs> Batman Returns, and uh, Batman Forever, and Batman. I saw all of them in theaters, and I was obsessed with Batman. I had like all my obsessions when I was a kid. Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, and Batman were my my huge things. And this came out right at sort of like that moment where you're about to leave childhood and start to have to like figure things out uh, in middle school. And you're you have a little bit more independence. You start going to movies by yourself. But th this was not quite at that moment yet. So I was I was still seeing movies with my parents. It was the only time I would go see movies was either with my parents or with a friend of mine's with their parents with us and this movie i remember just being like this is like one of the greatest all-time movies ever made top 10 out of the you know uh i was gonna say imdb what's the what's the the movie list that everybody salutes or whatever tips their hats to criterion 
collection? No, no. It, whatever. It's it, it's like top ten movies ever made next to Citizen Kane and Star Wars Episode One in my mind. <laughs> like at that. Uh, time. Yeah. At, at the that time. time. Yeah. Like <laughs> Paddington time. is at the top now, I believe. Yeah, but for me, walking out, I was like, <laughs> "This movie, the spleen. He's gonna he's gonna clean up at the Oscars next year." Did you see Paul Rubin's performance as the spleen? Killed it. He made my heart uh, warm. He made my eyes moist, and he made me laugh at farts again. It had been years, um, but I, yeah, I, I absolutely loved this movie when I first saw it. And like you know, I had it as a home uh, artifact, but I didn't have it on DVD. I had it on VHS. So like that was short lived. A after this moment was like when VHS started to die. So it was one of those movies that I had to go buy the TV and like hook up the the vcr again unplug the dvd figure out how to plug the, the vcr in and uh watch mystery men yeah i love this movie as a kid and i gotta say i still love it i still love it now yeah people who Great. i really like usually have this movie like my best friend who i didn't grow up with but went to high school with had also loved this movie and then you love this movie and then i don't know it's just magic this movie's magic jason uh I, uh, it's similarly, I, I didn't see it in theaters, but, and I didn't own it, but it was one of those movies that, uh, I would like rent all the time and I saw a million times, but weirdly enough, rewatching it, the second half of the movie was scrubbed from my memory because the first half of the movie was just like there. Like I was like, I've seen this a thousand times and I don't know how that happened like i don't know maybe it was like going to sleepovers when i was you know 13 years old and, and 14 years old and it would just be on and you pay attention for half of it and then you start you know goofing kissing above each other <laughs> kissing each other <laughs> playing no, spin the bottle yeah. playing spin, the, <laughs> spin the windmill um no. jesus what's that that's like that's like that that uh, no, but it's it, dangerous. It, it, it was also a constant all through the early 2000s. It was one of those things that was on TV all the time, as I recall. And I don't really have like this great history with it like you guys do, but I definitely, it, it definitely lived with me for my whole life, mostly. I mean, I was it's... kind of sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I always kind of forget that in 1999, I was 14, so I was already starting to be a little bit like. Mm -hmm. Ah, but this movie is like a PG, like the quintessential PG 13. Like it's the perfect, like, you know, movie for the, for a, a 14 year old at a sleepover. Right. And, and probably. Yeah. No one, no parent is going to scoff at it and be like, this is too violent for you. This is too yeah. raunchy for you. And they're right. It isn't. It's not. Even though, violent, even though possible. there is some pretty intense moments, they're, they're kind of played yeah. up for comedy and it's very much like, you're right. A parent isn't going to come in the room and be like, fart jokes, get this movie off the screen. It's really goofy. Even the like goofy. the gore is not, it's just goofy. It's goofy. <laughs> it is it's a, a very little disturbing movie. though, like when Mr. Um, or Mr. Captain Amazing turns inside out or whatever, it's it's kind of a little scary. Like, I mean. That reminded me of um, the Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. D. The, the evolution, the thing, right? Yes. <laughs> The devolution, oh, right? like the Chronos machine or whatever. Yeah, it's it's uh, it is unnerving. I would say I remember as a kid being like, "This is fucked," and then like him being all burnt and nasty. Yeah. But one of my most favorite lines in all of cinema happens moments later, which is when one of the disco <laughs> boys goes up and says, "This sucker's dead." <laughs> like, yeah, the, the sucker. <laughs> Totally my bad. favorite line after that is i don't think he's gonna make it <laughs> yeah. yeah or or when janine garofalo is like i'm gonna take his pulse and then mm -hmm. touches his touches arm and it shatters just yeah yeah cool uh, one of the one of the things about this movie that i i absolutely love is, is that it's like a chaotic stew of comedic sensibilities that like sh almost shouldn't work together like they're not all in the same same wave wavelength and every actor is hitting their own sort of comedic beat and even like side characters or characters that are in there for two seconds are, are hitting their own comedic beats. And it's just like this maelstrom of joke after joke, minute for minute. Like everything is hit, hitting and landing for me for the most part. There's, There's not, not a lot of jokes in this where I'm like, eh. Everything's not hitting enough. and landing for me. Sorry, Jason, go ahead. 
I was just going to say there's not enough who's on first style jokes in superhero movies. Even to this day. Oh, you like the sprinkler joke? Is that what you're gonna say? I like the one the one where they just keep going back and forth saying the same thing. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, you, oh, you. My <laughs> they're all trying to figure is out it, what bird call to make. Is it the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Okay. The when the bowler and Mr. Furious <laughs> are going back and forth. Is well, why don't one? you then? Well, well, I will. Well, <laughs> why, well, good yeah. then. I will. Then and why then as don't soon you? As he then? leaves, yeah. she starts up with the shoveler, and then they start being like, "Why don't you marry him? Why don't you marry him?" Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's another good one where uh, the sprinklers are about to activate, and they're all like, they all have a different explanation for what it could be, and so because of that, they all have a different uh, plan for what they should do. Or it's like, I mean, the whole lever thing is a yeah it's first. all it's the, the yeah how many flips they, they figured yeah how many tog toggle switch in in total are there not talking about the gratuitous first <laughs> toggle switch yeah i think the and greg Kinnear is structure... just like sweating and he's like i, yeah. I don't know one more flip, just another flip. <laughs> yeah I mean, we're getting, um, we're almost getting too into it. Yeah, too sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, um, let's talk about this director for a minute, and then we can, then we get into the body of the episode. There's not a lot about this director. <laughs> no. Well, I actually have, I, I did because I was like, how is, this movie's amazing? What the fuck? What, what happened? And so I, I did a little bit of research on this guy, and I'm like, oh, okay, he is just like a smart person. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, so he gotta play he, the sting though. Yeah, he, he made one other movie other than this for Roger Corman, which I couldn't really find too much information on. Um, and then he just directed commercials, but he's also like the mastermind behind all commercials from the 90s that are the most memorable. Like all right, all right. Play it on set. Are we rolling? God. Okay, let's shoot this piece of shit. Sound. My birthday. <laughs> I just got to hear, let's shoot this piece of shit. Uh, sorry. You were saying um, like he, he created like the, the Taco Bell dog and you know, like what we know of Dorito and Mountain Dew commercials and just like that sort of extreme end of nineties Gen X edge that exists in commercials, uh, which is supremely present in this movie, by the way, like that, that feeling of that feeling of having to um, express to the audience and have them understand very small pieces of action and understanding and emotion within very condensed moments of time is just happening over and over and over and over in this movie, which kind of makes it feel shorter than it is to me because you're you're digesting so much. You get to the end and you're like, that was two hours. It did not feel like two hours. It's in snippets. At the very end, when they're thanking people, they're like, and the people who remember jingles from commercials. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's for oh, him. Okay. When I said there wasn't a lot, I meant like for movies. Because right, he was like, right. I'm done after this one. <laughs> Which it's also like his only <laughs> back real... to commercial. His, well, his back director credits, it. his director credits are literally Mystery Men and like four commercials for Cars. He made a lot more than that for, for commercials. Uh, he made so much money making commercials that he was able to design and build a $20 million mansion like somewhere in fucking Italy or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, just, like, it's crazy. Yeah, um, but you wanna, I don't want to discredit this guy because he is a he is a prolific camera and electrical department person. And he did create the movie. He did work on the movie Beach Balls from 1990. Oh, Jason's favorite movie. Beach Balls. Which one of those balls uh, is your favorite ball in that picture, Jason? The third one. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it, it it's hilarious because this dude clearly got to start on like movie sets. Yeah, he's kind of department. the example of like the guy who got there and had enough talent to be able and to. And then his movie bombed and then he went back. To yeah, the I, and I think he paid for. <laughs> yeah, I think he was like, I'm not going to do that again. It took so much out of me and I can make just as much money just making a 30 second commercial that takes me a week um which is kind of disheartening in a way to me because there are really good commercial directors that translate even better to um uh, long form narrative and i mean visually there are some that like to nowadays you're like oh my god what's this guy doing uh, like the zack snyder has come to mind where you're like oh i understand he's very good at 
putting things on camera and telling and, and giving vibes in a movie, pairing music with visuals. But then he's like got to fill his movie full of sexual assault and for, for some reason. Don't but then you've got someone like, yeah. <laughs> and then you've got, no, we don't need to talk about Zack Snyder. I'm just saying that he started in commercials as well. And it's very obvious in his visual style and movies that he did. Um, someone like Ridley Scott also was a commercial director who translates pretty well to epic storytelling and, you know, his whole thing is like, you put it on screen and you ha you take your time and you'll know what you're doing. And like, he has an idea of something visually before he does narratively. And sometimes that is powerful. And I think that this guy has that same kind of superpower. He just didn't really give himself or maybe no one else gave him the chance to flex it a little bit more because his first movie bombed so hard. I will say. It sounded, sorry, it sounded like he made the choice. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't, I, I didn't look too hard into like why he stopped, just that he did. And I'm like, I guess I can understand that. But this movie's good, man. But I, will I mean, say, he didn't write it. He didn't write it. So. No, I, that's, well, that's what I want to talk about. Even though he's, there, it's not the, the director, the one of the people, the, so two people wrote this movie, Neil Cuthbert and uh, Bob Burden. Okay. Bob Burden's only real credits. Are, is are is this movie? Um, he's got he was himself in some things. He, he wrote the comic book. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. But the thing about Neil Cuthbert is Neil Cuthbert wrote the Adventures of Pluto Nash. Oh. And Hocus and Hocus Pocus. I don't like either of those. Movies. A classic. Oh well. <laughs> Hocus Pocus. Is we a came classic. at that from two different. <laughs> Yeah. Hocus Pocus is fantastic. You crazy. Yeah, I loved it as a kid. I didn't like it as a kid, so like I I didn't have I don't have that like I didn't like broccoli like, as a nail. kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You make a good Broccoli's point there. Delicious. But I also watched Hocus Pocus <laughs> as an adult and I still don't really like it that much. I like stuff about it, um, but I don't like it in its entirety. Though I do love Doug Jones, and Doug Jones is in this movie we're talking about right now. My my point is that the it's interesting that the writer of this 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 person that wrote this movie wrote two beloved movies uh, by other people, right? Pluto Nash, I don't think is beloved by anybody, is it? I don't know. I think people like Pluto Nash when they were a kid, didn't they? I don't know if I've ever actually seen it all the way through. I just recognize. I've never seen it's got, it. It's got it's got Rosario Dawson oh, and Luis Guzman and uh, and Rick the crazy Quaid, Quaid brother. And, you know. Sounds good already. <laughs> And Joe Pantoliano and Peter Boyle. Wow, this fucking and Pam Greer, isn't it? John Cleese, Ileana Douglas, John Cleese, fa famous. Is he like a conservative libertarian? Mick G. That's the that. name of the guy who did uh, the Charlie Charlie's Angels. He wasn't commercials. He was music videos. He was music videos. Yeah, and yeah. Mick G. He also like he had sort of a a much more inflated ego, I think, than somebody like uh, Kinga Usher, the guy who made this. Um, Seems it. I mean, he his name is not Mick G. <laughs> it's not his real yeah. name. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, he anyway. he gave himself like a fucking like hip hop name or like a brand name or whatever. Uh, Burden is the writer of Flaming Carrot Comics and the Mystery Men, which this okay. was based on. So yeah. I don't. He says there's. So I was reading like um, an interview that he did recently about it, and it sounds like he's got a byline, like a writing credit, because he was the creator for it and had like so, like input into the movie. But it doesn't seem like he was Are actually. The the script were the mist were the mystery men in flaming carrot i remember flaming carrot when i was a kid yes so flaming I, carrot is store guy uh they um his ragtag team are like the mystery men so mr fear so is in it and the blue if they Raja. remade this movie now there's a good chance we'd get it they're fl like a cgi flaming carrot character well they said so they didn't use the flaming carrot because they didn't want to play with the CGI and get a weird Howard the Duck style thing. Like that's yeah. what and quotes. Um, so that's why he's not one of the characters and they picked other characters for it because they just didn't have the CGI for it. So this is like Guardians of the Galaxy, even before Guardians of the Galaxy, where they just picked whatever people they could put on screen from this group, basically that cost the least amount of money and the most of the money went to the forks and the fucking bowling ball. <laughs> yes. I don't know if that's the, the sound that the bowling no, I mean, ball makes. 
I really like it. The yeah, no, no, I mean for like the superheroes. Didgeridoo noise, like wah wah wah. wah. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean for the Anji. superheroes, not not for like not for like the rest of the film at large. I just mean I know we were just joking around. Did here. we get a Dave joking. Cook um, jump scare? Yes. Was that who that was? It was a jump scare. Yeah. I hated I was like, it. Whoa. The waffler. I hate. <laughs> Oh, also, I'm pretty sure one of the rapper one of the rapper characters is Gnarls Barkley before he was ever famous. 99%. Uh, I, yeah, when I was a kid, I just assumed that everybody at that table was a cameo, but I didn't like I was too dumb as a kid. I'm like, yeah, they're probably all famous, right? They're all like famous actors. Like every single one of these people are famous. So, Steven, you have the DVD, right? Did you watch the extras? I don't. I, ha I have the VHS. No extras. <gasps> But I did watch a uh, behind the scenes, a couple of I things today. I have the extras. I don't have it. <laughs> it yeah, comes I with just the music video and it comes it with like vignette and the director commentary, which I didn't get a chance to watch, but will. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's weird because CeeLo Green wouldn't have a Narlis Barkley song for like another 11 years or something. And what like he must have been some sort of movie uh some sort of music producer before he was ever a solo artist well one of the songs that was for like made for this movie who are those mystery men featuring romaine jones is kel in the maftmcs is he one well, of those kel mitchell is the, is the invisible boy well there you go yeah, yeah. He's he was like a musician. He's also the guy from like uh, good burger and shit like we all know oh, yeah that's burger yeah. that's kel I thought it was Cisco for some reason, but I think Cisco's like in another movie. Well, that's because you're era. racist. No, it's just because the hair. I, I when I was a kid, I thought he was Cisco as well. I was like, oh shit, is that? I just got Cisco? a notification. You've both been canceled. <laughs> oh no, not again. <laughs> ha! You're canceled for once. But Cisco's in some movie from like around this time, isn't he? Is he in Wild Wild West? Is that the one that he's, he's in? in the uh, the Thong Song music video? That's what you're thinking of. <laughs> I just googled Cisco movies. He's in Snow Dogs, Get Over It, Surf School. Does he play one of the uh, dogs? He's or in is he Wild... li literally in it as like a or the voice of a dog. He must be a voice. He is in voice. Wild Wild West. He is in Wild Wild West. He's in Who Pieces he of April. Wild Wild is he just in the music video John West, for the Desperado. song? Desperado. That's what I'm thinking. But also, I oh, because he's the singer. He's like the singing part of that song, right? I guess yeah. so. Um, no, he plays Smith, Cisco Will in Smith the movie. Can't sing. He can only kind of like talk rap or whatever. Like he's not. Yeah, he's not yeah the, the, the music video for Wild Wild West. He plays himself. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not okay. in the movie. Okay. I was no. going to say, I've seen Wild Wild West almost as much as I've seen all the movies we're doing this month, and I do not recall seeing Cisco in the movie, but... How many times have you I seen this know. movie, though? Beach balls? Oh, my God! <laughs> Sorry, Noel. I know I've that, I know that covers up your face when that happens, and it must not... It was a giant beach Cover ball. Cover my right? face, whatever you need. Anyway, I think we should... <laughs> what, we're, what we're getting at here is that... This movie is is just as mysterious as its title. Mystery Man is the the director of this movie. He's not a household name. He's not something that people would immediately identify with his work. But he has a vast expanse and an, like an, an annal almost like a like a library of works that if you were to show people, they'd be like, "Yeah, I remember that from the '90s." And a lot of it is is his stuff, and uh, it's wild, almost as wild as Wild Wild West. I mean, I feel like they could have done that practically. I'm just saying. A big character. Uh, in 99, it would have looked like shit, and it probably would have made this movie less good. In my opinion. I agree. I think they made the if right they made, choice. If they remade Mystery Men in 2025 and had Flaming Carrot and whatever the fuck that other character is. I don't think they should make. remake it. I think they should do a Lego sequel. I yeah, think they yeah. Should do like a make it more comic book accurate. Do what anyway, they why don't you hit, the, hit the body thing? Hey, hey, guys, guys. You're both talking at the same time. Noel will go first. Thank you. Well, he's yeah. trying to railroad me. Would you have a heart out at 1030 like I do? I don't think do? we can say railroad anymore. <laughs> Did I just get canceled? Uh -oh. Everybody's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I swear I heard someone use it in a work context. That's a problem. Okay. Um, Let's see. What was I saying? Don't remember. Thanks, Jason. Leg a no, sequel, the, and then you both start talking sequel. at the same time. Be a like prestige TV short series. Yeah, that yeah. would be the best way to do it. I think, like, give it oh, a little yeah, like, mini series thing. 
But imagine it was like they're at the spleen's funeral because Paul Rubens is dead. And there you still hear farting coming from inside the casket as it's being lowered. Because that's the oh. that's the that's immediately you set what kind of comedy this TV show is. Yeah. Perfect. Is that um, good? <laughs> when you said that, all I could think about was when they were at Han's funeral and then they have to go back to the Tokyo Drift cast and find out <laughs> more information about Han. We found this <laughs> on him. Alive, yeah. That's still. how it starts. Yeah. Somehow the, the flaming carrot and the spleen are, are intertwined <laughs> in some sort of fiery fart past. Ho, 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 ho! Everybody back up! Because here comes the body of the episode. I just wanted to push us through to the body because uh, we'll just keep. We're already in the body. We've been talking about the body. This is the body of the episode, and this is the point of the podcast where it becomes fucking real. That's what does blue? What does blue Raja look like? It's Raja. Raja. (laughs) What does blue Raja look like? Um, that's fucking great. I, uh, Hank Azaria is fantastic in this film. I really think that, uh, you know, it's good that he didn't do a racist Indian accent. Um, Uh, it's still a really, really, really problematic take. (laughs) You can't. Yeah. I think that the movie also sort of, uh, acknowledges the fact that it's, it's bad though. Like it, even he it, is like, well, if you know your British history, you'll know that uh, British people were really bad. <laughs> yeah, but he's still dressed up in that's true, like yeah. garb. So he's still got that. He's being like what the British did in in India is horrible. Mm-hmm. The fact that he called that's just it's not good, and it wouldn't be done today. But it's also uh, not the point of this podcast, so we're just gonna put it over here. Yeah, I'm gonna acknowledge okay. it's problematic and that I really I, I also, don't yeah, like I, it. I don't think it's like a way. For, it's a it's a <laughs> thing for us to to sit down and, and discuss <laughs> yeah. how they could but have done it better. I or... had to say that of like I don't like it. Yeah. Hank Azaria at this point in his career is just playing a lot of really problematic stereotypes um, all over. That's like what he's doing in the birdcage. He does it like obviously on the Simpsons, he does it. Um, so yeah, it could be worse. Um, but, but it's also nice to hear that he also now current day Hank Azaria is like completely willing to talk about it and be like, yeah, I, like I did not realize, realize the implications of what I was doing back then. And that's why I'm completely yeah. okay with somebody coming in and replacing me on the Simpsons for is, several. Is that what happened? But that's what I'm saying. Like it could be, have been worse like the fact that this movie came out in 1999 and we don't get a single r word and we don't get like a whole bunch of other stuff extremely egregious stuff is actually pretty good like i said that it holds up so that's like the one problematic piece i have and then there's one other but like overall for a 1999 movie pretty good (laughs) pretty good you're right there isn't a lot of like there's no gay panic stuff there's no like you said there's no r words um Considering the source material probably has all that because it's very much like an indie, an indie comic from the '90s, you know. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Bob Burden is the guy who like in that, so he was a co-writer because he. I don't see who Blue Raja could be on this comic book cover, even. Well, I don't see who who anyone could be on this. Cover. Well, the shoveler is clearly there. Oh yeah, there's a guy with the shoveler. Claiming- Claim, f- claiming, flaming carrot has the bowling ball, I think. And Mr. All right, I, take this away. I don't want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Get All it right, out of here. Dave Mater right. did make a good point I, that I did not movie mean. deserves a sequel. I just wanted to point that out. They I like a honestly, sequel. That, that is a, a, a thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I mean, we can do it now or we can do it later. I was going to bring it up later, but I was like, if you had sort of a blue sky pitch for what you would do for a sequel to this movie, because I think that it, it almost feels appropriate for them to make a sequel now, um, just based on the iconography and history of uh, superhero movies over the last 10 ish, 10 to 14 years or whatever, since the first Iron Man movie up until now, I feel like something like this should come, come out of nowhere and, and kick, uh, the, the MCU in the butt and be like, hey, remember this? 
Well, it's also universal, so it's like the only thing Disney doesn't own. Yeah. <laughs> and and like they they don't even even in this movie they're making fun of stuff without directly making fun of it in a creative and fun way, right? Like Captain Amazing in general is like he's Batman, he's Superman, he's he's every sort of mainstream super white man superhero that you can think of all wrapped into one with a little bit of homelander sprinkled in like yeah. pre home, it's a little bit, becoming a household name it's a and little it's bit great. homelander it's it, i like that he has uh his ads slapped all over his body mm. i'm surprised that um like he's the a boys, yeah i'm surprised the boys didn't do that really they do have commercials and stuff in that show but i'm surprised that homelander doesn't have like a giant coca-cola logo across well i think it's because of this movie right so in the comics uh the mystery men have the logos on their car thing um and then it was the movie choice to put them on captain amazing so like they took i I think it's a great choice like it's so funny it perfect like you said like a race car like yeah like he himself is the race car, which is it, like it's so brilliantly fun. And like when he gets so know, mad that he rips one off and is like, like it's holding like up Korean, the logo, Korean like, Pepsi or something. Yeah, yeah. And that's what would have you ever seen like KHL players? Um, you know what? That's a KHL. Thing. Yeah, the Russian Hockey League. Oh no! What does the K stand for? I don't know. KGB. <laughs> <laughs> No. The K stands for KGB. Anyway. It's an acronym um, for an acronym. Yeah. They yeah. they yeah. and a lot of other European hockey leagues are just covered in logos. Like their jerseys. Oh, like it's not just like the little thing, it's just like completely covered. Yeah, we're we've entered into a universe where in the uh, WWE they now have the prime logo smack dab in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania. It's like a it we're like minutes before wrestlers have fucking that shit all over them. Didn't they just like They're, chemically prove that prime is like absolutely horrific for your body or something yes. not too long ago. Yeah, there's like a class action suit or something yeah. on it. Yeah, it's supposed to be like the new Gatorade, but it's literally the electrolytes are just sugar. Yeah. <laughs> electrolytes <laughs> which are... is not an electrolyte. Yes. You know what? This isn't chemistry I talk. <laughs> yeah. Electrolyte is it's like time salt for and chemistry lemon, talk. Lemon yeah. juice. Like No, yeah. What is in here? No, it's yeah. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Also, if you have a migraine, try Pedialyte. I wonder if that'll work. Works for hangovers. I was using Gatorade, and um, that's why I also have the Gatorades, and I needed cap. This isn't migraine talk. <laughs> migraine talk. We're, it's a new segment on the show. Like it's a, how to get. Yeah, my my thoughts for the the sound clip will be like a thunderstorm, like <laughs> in the distance, like migraine. Ah, fuck. And then and then the bowler thing can just yeah. like a. <laughs> And then someone going, <laughs> like sc- screaming for their lives. All the sounds that yeah. make your migraine worse. Yeah. Uh, I have. I took like less notes than I normally do. Um, do you want me to like keep us on pace with the with the plot? Like I usually. I do? mean, I think we should go a little bit with the plot because I, I do think that it is a very plot easy right. movie to discuss, and and every sort of set piece and sequence in this movie is fun enough to talk to or talk yeah. about. Um, I don't think we need to go into complete detail for everything, but like, there's so much fun in this movie. Well, the like, opening every scene has something in it that op- makes me giggle a lot. The opening segment of this movie is really cool because we just get this like this like sweeping shot of Champion City, and we get a real like Batman style like villains coming into an. But it's like it also feels like, like cyberpunk or Blade Runner, Runner cyberpunky. Like, it's yeah. like Night City from Cy- from cyberpunk, and you and, and you're like hyped up with this like amazing feeling of like this city is full of crime, and then we well that's what I wanted to say about the <laughs> the set pieces of the city. They there's really like like scenes wise. There's really only like seven or eight locations, but because of the matte paintings of the city in the background and these sweeping shots of the city, you feel like the the world building in this is really interesting. You feel like you're in this giant city, so you know you're only seeing these few these few elements, but you do get the the idea that you're in a massive sprawling city, like. A yeah. bigger city it's, than I've ever seen in a movie, it maybe looks like like Schumacher's Gotham. Gotham, like you know yeah, those yeah, yeah. sweeping shots of, especially in Batman and Robin. 
uh, yes. where you have like the big statues and the so it felt a little bit like that mixed with like the fifth element was kind of the vibe yeah. I was I was Which, feeling. Yeah, the fifth element is directly you know referencing Blade Runner. It's just like, sort of this like weird sort of hyper. Uh, cyber version of the future but like it's also supposed to take place in 1999 which is great it's supposed well, to it's like I, I just thought, I, sorry i was just gonna say i saw somebody say like what if they made like a fallout game but like instead of it being like the 1950s is like the sort of the retro futurism like the 90s is the retro futurism and that's what this feels like it feels like we're in some sort of weird horrible dystopian future but it's the 90s so it, this could work as a remake if it was still set in that that style the the thing with the 90s though what was popular was like blow up stuff weird cyberpunk things gel pens like it really fits that uh <laughs> shout out gel pens <laughs> no we're on the black paper right um, oh i do like, of course like it this completely fits the theme of like this plasticky kind of like neo future punkish what that was like well, yeah the late Even 90s the captain amazing himself like i one of the main reasons i wore this knowing it was going to be loud but one of the main reasons is because when he when he moves around this is the sound you get when he's when he's like i thought it was maybe pathetic and he like grabs the pepsi you know like he's squeaking oh. and stretching the other thing that they had a lot of um I, like i think it was i didn't take a good look i think it was chinese but it reminded me of firefly how the language like the predominant languages in firefly and serenity are english and and chinese and that's just like part of that neo future right yeah. like in the 90s that would have been something on the mind as well yeah everybody thought that uh, by 2030 china was going to take over. well i mean i hate to keep bringing up blade runner but that was like the in encompassing concept of, of blade runner was that like, so it's all just blade runner it's blade, <laughs> runner. It's blade, it's blade runner all the way blade down. runner sort of was the forerunner for this sort of style which you know the fifth element and this are just like so what does the future look like well wh who are the two biggest powers in the world right now America and China. Eventually, America and China are going to get so big that they start to overlap, and then we're going to have stuff like this, where it's like your whole city is going to be presented in both English and some some form of Chinese, whatever predominant one uh, beats out the others. You know, and, and yet like, they still have that fun diner, and, and, and they still got a nice little diner. But yeah, if you look the at like the, the money, the, the train tracks. Though, but if you look at the, the money that they Chicago, use and, and the menus and the, the TV screens and stuff, you you have the writing that isn't English, and then you have the money that they use that is very reminiscent of, I mean, it's kind of reminiscent of Canadian money, but like it, it also looks, you know, foreign to an American and being like, uh, a coin with a hole in it? What the fuck is that all about? Like, that's the kind of stuff that they've got You know that on. futuristic thing that they have that instead of having like a little, a, a mini jukebox at your diner table, you have a full on television. <laughs> I was thinking about when they're watching the TV. I'm like, it's not a full must... on television. It's a tiny, it's a little shitty it's radio a tiny with TV. a TV attached to it. But yeah. the thing that I was thinking of is like, you're at this diner. Uh, do all these people have to have like a, a limiter on their volume, or is everybody just like yelling, like, turn your fucking TV down? It's directional I... sound. Fair enough. I like that. That's cool. Uh, this this opening sequence has the app. Yep, the red eyes. They're a villainous group uh, led by Artie Lang. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there you go. That's that's for the viewers. That's exactly what it looks like at the every table. They have. Is that those. functional? Yeah, I have to put batteries in, but it is. And then I can also take out my VHS here. Spoon. <laughs> Spoon. <laughs> that's awesome. So, does the VHS play something? Uh yeah, it does. That's, it plays an aerobics you, video. How old is it? <laughs> uh, it was made like two years ago. So it's like a, uh, yeah. But, uh, what's the screen like? What's the? <laughs> I can show you. I can play Care Bears on and stuff. I'll show. I'll show you a video later. <laughs> okay, cool. I, it's. I'm actually. That's really interesting to me because I want to know it, it, what the technology is. Probably the technology from those old like. Uh, those old mini TVs, they just were like, what if we repackaged it and sold it to millennials? They'll eat that shit up. And you were like, I am a millennial. <laughs> it's like Game & Watch. Like, it's like, it's not. <laughs> oh. Jeez, Louise. You guys. 
I know what Game and Watch are is. both fucked. I'm sorry. I just think it's a little. That's what it looked like. Anyway, whatever. Um, World Mind has to go talk about Star Trek, but he's very much looking forward to watching this episode of Hey, did you see this one? Thank you, World Mind. Thank you. We, it's full of leather noises. We read your. Uh, we read In your. Your bit at the beginning, migraine talk, and uh, we've been talking about uh, the tick a little bit, and we've been talking about, of course, mystery men. So, uh, feel free to watch. You can watch uh, our show wherever, whenever uh, we're meant to be together. I'll be there, and you'll be near, uh, and that's the deal, my dear. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what? Perfect. Thank See, this is a really good subject because we can go real deep on the nineties. It's true. We were all um, there. So I hope everybody on I our mean, show this we, month was around we, in the nineties. Before we move on past Artie Lang, because he is the leader of the Red Eyes, he walks in and he goes, "Hey, with the Red Eyes, so everybody freeze or whatever." And I'm like, "This man, Artie Lang, has the back. most Batman villain sounding, like not villain, but like henchman sounding voice that I've ever heard as a child, to the point that I still." emulate it when i do my own batman voice I'm, I'm i'm just doing Artie lang from mystery man i'm not doing anything else that i've picked up from it from any other piece of media so and this uh, movie really imprinted on you oh god it's it's mystery men is branded into my butt it's <laughs> like, like renezme onto jacob <laughs> yes it's it there's there's a little mystery man logo burned branded into my my booty and uh, it's this movie. I also do the uh, the Eddie Izzard voice a lot, uh, like over and over and over. Just like that character in general is the perfect sort of henchman. The, the Disco Boys in general is is something that I obviously connect enough with that I have decided to be a Disco Boy tonight. I love all of the factions that he has, like all of his gangs. Yeah. There's they're just all something goofy. about it. It's like, I don't know who else has done it, but it just feels so satisfying to have all these little groups of like. Very, uh, they're, they're, they're diverse, but they're also like, you know, they're not implicitly criminal in their, their, uh, their inspiration, which is kind of fun. Yes. And do you know what it is? It's that you would have one of those in a style of movie. Like in, you have like the, the foot clan, you have like the hand, you have these like groups that are all, like very uniform yeah. and you have like the tracksuit mafia and here you just have like groups, all of them. Yeah, of that's the world building element. Gently like. Where you, like a meeting of the, a meeting of the crime bosses is always great, but a meeting of the crime bosses where all their henchmen are there too. You know, you don't right. you only see the that party. in like you only see that in Saturday morning cartoons, really. Like there, Man. there, there's no X Men or there's no MCU movie where this happens, but there should be. I wish that there is, there is a version of this same sort of meeting in The Dark Knight, but it's nowhere True. nowhere True. near as fun, yeah. and it's also a, almost a little bit more problematic because it's it's a little bit too deep seated in like reality. The Dark Knight is way more problematic than this movie. Yeah, and then, I would agree. And then this movie's a cartoon. Joker, this is a cartoon. Joker puts a pencil up a guy's face and then also breaks a fucking pool cue in half. And it's like I'm, I'm, I'm Jason. I'm that is the least problematic part of that entire sequence. I don't know if you know that, but everything else is way more problematic. But than not as problematic as The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie sucks though. That movie Yens is the best one. I swear to God, people. Oh my God. I, I mean, listen. I like all those movies, but I also understand that they have issues and they're bad. But no, I like them too. <laughs> this you movie. I don't like them. Has, what are you saying? I, well, I'm just saying that this movie has no problems, and I like everything about it. And I don't care if anything is problematic. Even the Blue Raja. I think that he, as problematic as he is, he's so charming and nice when he's talking to his mom and stuff. Like I get all warm in my heart, and I want to cry a little bit about it. I like it. it when he drops it's the not accent. The main... He's just like, okay, Ma, like, we get it. Like, uh, I'm sorry. You're really cheesing me. It's not the main thrust of his character, like, the, the problematic part. Like, they're not relying on that part for the joke. They're relying on, like, e other things. The fact that he throws forks, the type of person that he is. Yeah, like, He's a little bit and... effeminate, and, like, he, he has trouble getting out of because every like the, the shoveler and Roy, they both are able to kind of uh, disconnect from their their characters for a minute 
while they're talking as friends, whereas he's almost in incapable of doing so, right? Like, he, is a coping mechanism? Yeah. Like he's he's in this yeah. character. He has some sort escape. of trauma that exists <laughs> like, <laughs> elsewhere. Yes, <laughs> like picked on or nerd or whatever yeah. it was. But I like, think this he's is the his escape from that equivalent. He's the the equivalent of like a, a basement guy who never. Well, he's probably like a home, weird though. history nerd who like yeah. learned a lot about uh, British history and like identified with a character that he maybe shouldn't have identified with in <laughs> in the sense that he's going to embody that character not realizing that what he's doing is problematic but you know and that's what makes it like not egregious is how that he's a full like a well-rounded character and that's i think why these characters work for me because they all have they're, they're not one note even though you don't get a lot of screen time with most of them um like understand who they are and what their issues well that's that's what's great about this this opening sequence too like they show up they try to save the day they all fail repeatedly there's all the did you guys notice the weird sight gag where uh they knock a, a glass of apple juice over and it falls into a bedpan like the brand of coffee. Yes, I was that. like, why is that oh, there? It's because it looks like <laughs> pee. Pee, pee. Like no, no, no. Pee. I know. I was like, in the universe, like, why would that bedpan be there? And it's because they're in an old, they're in an old home. Yeah. And like, I understand, but it always gives me pause. Of, like, wait, what's the setting? But it's here? like, you get that. And then you also get, I think, I think it's the Blue Raja. It might, it might be someone else gets thrown into the bar over, over the bar. And then it smashes the bar. But the bar is just all like big, giant. Uh, containers of pills and stuff <laughs> like it's not and, a like, bar it's just like yeah. it's like a medical bar <laughs> i didn't even read it even really watching cool. it agreed yeah. i didn't even read this place as an old folks home until they kept referencing it throughout the movie when you see it it just looks like what? you didn't a, a party didn't? they're all old people they're i noticed so that they were all old but it lo it still just looks like a bat when when the joker busts in with his right. joker's crew and they're like we're like, taking all clearly over. have never yeah. been in a retirement home this is like, like every like, night have, every yeah. night they do this at a retirement we do bingos we do yeah. get robbed by a you've got three old ladies going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah every night and then Captain, it looked like jabba's it, palace in there <laughs> it 100 percent. and the jokes were like star wars level jokes too where like the guy takes his teeth out and then he's like come on give me more and he takes his eye out and he's like hey keep an eye out for me would you get and he like <laughs> takes it and throws it in and like <laughs> it's just a bunch of like boom 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 elderly jokes but some of them aren't even elderly jokes it's like you know dismemberment jokes guys is this a yeah. perfect movie yes it, it might is. be it is. It it's might also be like I didn't want to bring it up till later, but like they they deal with so much toxic masculinity in this movie that it's like great. Like it it's yeah, so Ben good. Stiller's so whole character is like. But an all of them, all toxic. even the shoveler gets dealt a hand. True. Like it's, it's great, man. All s levels of toxic ma masculinity are being being dealt with in this movie. Anyway, Captain Amazing shows up and <laughs> saves the day. Essentially, that's he just comes in and handily yeah. deals with everybody. We meet Tom Waits, who is Heller. He's the Heller. basically Tony. Say Tony with Stark. me. Heller, Heller. Yeah. Later in the movie, the shoveler even like says it that way, which I thought was a nice little touch. Where he's like, "Wait a second. Heller. And then he hands the card to the spleen, who has a, like a very obvious speech impediment, and <laughs> they put like I think they put as many S's into like his title and like everything on that card as possible because it's so much. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so much possible. more funny him reading it than anyone else reading it. Anyway, um, the, oh, sorry. He, before Heller is a on, weapons designer. Yes. Yeah, I just have to say. Um, so when I was reading the thing that uh, Burden wrote, uh, he said that Flaming Carrot Comics was sort of his idea of like Pee Wee's Playhouse mixed with like SNL sketches, right. and I just thought it was fun because now you have Paul Rubens in the movie, basically playing a version like using aspects of the Pee Wee character in this character. He I even yells like him at one point. I watched uh, a few interviews of the cast in this today and uh, Paul Rubens, when he was outside of the movie being released was, you know, just being Paul Rubens kind of like sheepish and quiet and being like, you know, I'm not that, I'm not that quiet and reserved all the time. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fine. Like he's usually with another actor. Like I think he was with Ben Stiller and Ben Stiller's like, Oh no, yeah, he's great. And then it cuts to the onset uh, interviews and he's just, 
the spleen. Like he's just doing the interviews as the spleen. He's like, <laughs> well, you know, the director's asking us to go over here and c- certain things are not quite copacetic. And you're like, oh my God. He's See, that would be the method Daniel. acting. Yeah. I wouldn't mind on set. Like that's not particularly toxic. But like, I couldn't fun. tell if he was method acting or if he was just doing it for the inter- interview, which is like both are funny. Like that's pretty funny. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail. I just want, uh, remembered that snippet. I think that Paul Rubens uh, got a bad rap for what he did. Lived. Yeah, I think that his scandal. Oh, come on, Jason, to... we don't need to bring this. No, up he- hear me out. Hear me out. Compared to a lot of the other working actors who exist I- I- now and just get a-, a pass, I think what he did is, a- is especially not a- that egregious. And I feel like we we because he was sort of blackballed for a long time, we kind of missed out on Paul Rubens because Paul Rubens is an amazing actor and i was just looking at his imdb and besides being in like some shitty other movie he was in uh matilda he was in matilda and he was in uh he was in he was in dunstan checks in everything else he's pretty much done great movies during the 90s (laughs) you know dunstan checks in uh was it like behind an animated character this feels like you know this is kind of his like re-emerging into being a live actor again because after this he's you know on screen a lot as an actor um and i'm glad because whenever paul rubens shows up in anything it's fucking great you know? yeah i mean it's a tough conversation to have but i tend to agree with you that like if you really boil it down, like he's in an adult theater, he's like, and then the other thing with the pictures, he buys vintage photos and it just happens to be one of the, like, you buy sets and sets of vintage photos. Like, so it's not great, but like, for whatever reason, they hung him out to dry. Like they just, they, yeah. like, it's because he's gay. They, it's, it's true. Crazy. They like made an example out of him because of, because of that. And it, it really sucks that it fucking, caused him to have to go and basically be a voice actor for the rest of his career except for late like late yeah and other outstanding people are like meanwhile just doing all kinds of things yeah look at fucking rob lowe you know look at hugh grant okay transition to steven what did hugh grant do give us a couple squeaks (laughs) squeak me daddy This is my impression of Paul Rubens in an adult theater. No! <laughs> no! I don't even want to know what the context is on that squeeze. He's trying to get his leather pants off so he can jerk off. <laughs> Speaking of egregious, uh, uh, the police in this movie remind me of the police from the movie The Mask a little bit. And also the police in every universe suck. Uh, mm-hmm. They suck in our universe. They suck in every movie. They only don't suck in movies where they're like, it's cop again. heroes. Yeah. yeah, essentially. But, but then it's propaganda. Uh, you know, the bad boys in the movie, the bad boys uh, starring Will Smith. And okay, but this Mark. movie also is just like telling us that and it's great. And it's yeah, fun. these fucking police. They're and they're only in the one scene and they're assholes and then that's that. They make You never see a police, a, a police officer again. Exactly. Yeah. Which well, is weird is, that they... This is also where you get our glorious introduction to Ben Stiller's ability to think of something really good to say a couple of seconds too late. Like he's, he Sweet always dreams, says something that's all right, but he doesn't <laughs> say it in time. And or he says the, like, never a gets bunch, he's kind of, it's kind of like Rick, Rickyisms from the, the trailer park. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Rickyisms from the trailer park boys where he's like, mi- like mixing all Mixed these metaphors. ideas together. Yeah. Well, when the bowler's reading him to filth when they're trying to make him angry. Yeah. And she's like, it's just confusing mixed metaphors. Your penmanship you is angry? atrocious. Your penmanship you dress- is atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> you dress in the manner of a, of a male prostitute. <laughs> 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 they're all good. All good burns. They burn. And, he, and he's not getting mad, which is, you know, good for him. No. He's getting he's over his good, toxic, toxic He's mess. having some self-reflection moments. Uh, speaking of, of not having self-reflection we captain amazing we get that scene where he gets in the car he's all pissed off uh and he sort of was revealed to us that all of his villains are gone so that's why he's losing his his deals uh What's the first his one endorsement deals it's the funniest one of the funniest lines of this movie 
Uh, Get I do. Uh, Death Man. Death Man is yeah. dead. Death Man is dead. <laughs> These are things that I'm like hooting and hollering as a as a ten year old, being like, "This is the funniest shit I ever heard in my life." Death Man is dead. Well, the, all of the so Sphinx, funny. the Sphinx's gimmick, where like he's an amazing superhero, but also he really just like. If you have the power, then the power has you, like that kind of thing <laughs> but over he and over. Did cut those guns in half with his mind. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think what that I have a, can I can I get the theory theme? I have a little theory. I have a little theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a little theory. Theory. Of the mystery man. This isn't a long theory, but in the universe of the mystery man, you can only use your power in like a you know how in like Marvel movies, a lot of times people discover new abilities because they're under great duress. The mystery men can only use their powers under like the most extreme duress. But even then, I think the mystery men can only use their powers like once a year. <laughs> I think that in the mystery men, there are only three people who actually have powers. <laughs> Everyone else is just like the power of your heart. Within you. Invisible Even, Boy has them. He's one of them, yeah. The, but he the has the power has to her dad. Completely. That's another one. True. Yeah. And Even then, Captain Amazing, like he he's got the power of he's money. Batman. He's, he's of got Batman. A, he's Iron Man. But he's Iron he's Man. Batman, a jet pack. And, yeah. 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 He's all the shitty billionaire characters. But like Tom Waits, Heller is also kind of Iron Man because he makes all those. He he's like an I inventor. Guess. He's more like a like his Via Con Dios. I had completely, like, I did not remember that was there, and I, I cracked up. It was, I love a good point break. I think that back. when and he goes by, I mean, he, he's really the funniest character in the movie to me. Like, like everything that he says is is golden uh, once we're reintroduced to him. I like, forgot about him. When you come in and he, he's he's using one of those water uh, harps or whatever, like in his his there's a bunch of chickens around him. You're like, okay, this is already setting up to be great. But then like everything he says to them during this adventure through his laboratory, I guess, which is like a rundown carnival, is amazing. Where he's like, I can I can trick that out with a clamshell and a four year warranty. <laughs> like he's you know, like all these other case and a four year warranty. <laughs> To your point, Jason, about your theory, um, the flaming carrot guy, like his superpowers came about. He was like, I think, a carpet layer, and he read five thousand books in one sitting, and then became a superhero by putting on a carrot mask. And that was just. I had a, a my character that I wrote in in high school called Spider Hero. Uh, his thing was that he gets so some radioactivity gets on a Spider Man comic, and the Spider-Man comic bites a normal person. <laughs> so he becomes spider hero, but it's, it, the joke is kind of like, he's not a direct rip off. He's just, he's been bitten by a radioactive Spider-Man comic. So it's, it, I feel I, like the power would be that in that situation would be that you can write really mediocre stories for and then I did. Years. And I wish, <laughs> I wish I had that. I also had a thing where there was a uh, bat Stan and Stan bat where a bat and a human's brains like, switch so you have a really intelligent bat which is pointless and a really like, like a man, bat. man with a bat no yeah. but a human with a bat like bruce wayne with the intelligence of a bat was sort of the joke like i i was trying to write these like i grew up i used to hang around comic book shops That's real mad kid. magazine shit right, right there, jason and i I, I used to hang around comic it's book adorable. shops and i used to leaf through all like the the dollar bin was filled with these fucking with these comic books and yeah, i used man. to leaf through them and read them and and all of these weird like uh, i mean it's not that i also wrote a comic when i was young as well i too wrote a comic yeah. my first job was at a comic book store fun fact world i had a, I had a character called Nornot the defender who was like it was basically a ripoff of star wars kind of but the thing is is when the the dad is like i'm your father come to the dark side no, we have cable tv Norna. it's like okay Yep, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> That's the twist. I was. I just wrote a lot of Rogue and Gambit fan fiction as well. You just, you just wrote <laughs> Rogue and Gambit fucking fanfics. Mine was <laughs> a, <laughs> mine was a, a team, a team up. It was, it was called the Eccentric Eight. 
and there was eight people. They were like, like my eight best friends, and we all had different superpowers that we got from a chemical explosion in our uh, bio or our chemistry class. Because the, the chemistry teacher was like, I'm going to try and do something that's never been done ever. And she like poured it all in and we all blew up. And then she became the villain. And like, I liked her as a chemistry teacher. So I like went to her and I showed her all the panels and I was like, is it okay if I do this? And she was like, this is amazing. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, now I that I have some, your blessing, you're the villain. I had some, I had some writing similarly uh, from high school where I would, I was writing a novel. Her henchmen were called the periodic table and they all had different like. That's all. That's really good there. actually. That's Yeah, that's pretty good. And the, but my story was heavily influenced by Final Fantasy VIII, which was like one of the probably the newest game at the time. So it was all this like interpersonal like drama, and then they would like go fight battles, you know. I like how this has become like nostalgic. Back in the '90s when we were kids, this yeah. we all, we all decided watching to make Mystery our own Men comics. and yeah. writing comics. I did like X Men stories, but like because with X Men you can just like create. There's so many types of X-Men, so I wouldn't center it in the X-Men universe, but it would be, like, I wouldn't be Adjacent. with Cyclops and whatever, but it would be, yeah. like, a different group of X-Men that I've created and whatnot. That's smarter, because, like, that kind of thing can be picked up if it is becomes popular enough. They're like, let's give you money. For That's it. why I'm not going into any details. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, like wait Rogue... a They stole all your characters? <laughs> Rogue was originally an Image Comics character from Generation X, uh and then they were like that's a great character i had Look a friend her boobies i'll give you like a small example of like so there was eight of us and we all had different powers but one of my friends he really liked like shitty horror movies and but he also like didn't cut his nails often enough so when he would grab you or touch you sometimes he would like cut you with his nail and you'd be like ah god you fucker cut your nails so his power was that he his name was the cuticle. <laughs> and he just had like <laughs> slightly too long fingernails that they could cut through anything. <laughs> well, that's what Casanova Frankenstein's power that's is. That's true. Yeah, but also right. Casanova Frankenstein, the reason he hangs with the disco boys is because he's got a coke nail. Yes. Yeah. Did you put that together? I, that, I on did. This yes. watch, <laughs> on this watch, I was what like, oh, the, the reason Raimi, why he's got like, the coke, coke nail, nail and... vision when the nail yes. is like going like from the camera, it's like attached to the yeah. camera. So we've gotten five minutes into the movie. Yeah, right? we need to move. <laughs> move no, here. but I don't have a lot of notes. So basically, uh, they talk about Casanova Frankenstein has been in a mental institution. Uh, Casanova Frankenstein uh, is now free to go because that one villain that they only she's from stuff um but she's only in this movie for like two seconds uh Are you talking about his psychiatrist the psychiatrist character oh, who's yeah. like but when i was a kid of... i you know how like her her the the arms of her glasses are like thick and translucent and they yeah. like project light through when i was a kid i just for some reason thought she had like a line painted across her eyes like this like orange line and i was like that is so fucking sick <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> that she just uh, instead of doing regular eye makeup she just puts a line like she's in blade runner, <laughs> I'm gonna say blade runner it was like very joker hurley quinn right like yeah yeah when but was then you this is when you get uh batman Lance Hunt animated series comes in and he's like am i too late to uh say what my vote is and everyone's like oh lance hunt after like the doctors are like this is outrageous. And he turns to another guy and the other guy's like, yes. <laughs> yes, it so is. So is Captain Amazing's alter ego a lawyer? Uh, He's like, a billionaire lawyer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> or something. I, yeah. <laughs> Did you know Nightwing like, is a lawyer? Barbara's yeah, also a now, lawyer. Guys. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Dick Grayson becomes a lawyer later? He went to law school. So there's like all this like, while he's Nightwing, there's all these like, cop or uh, no, no, lawyer just, drama shit in DC comics. That seems that a little knowledge. bit too smart for DC. No, he just has that knowledge. Oh, so he's not a detective. He's just knows the law. <laughs> we also stupid. need to note that uh, <laughs> Lance Hunt pu pulls out a letter as though he's reading a letter from Lance Hunt or from Captain Amazing being like, let's ring in the new millennium by letting Casanova Frankenstein go free. But yeah. He's like reading a note that is just his grocery list and it's like grape soda and like all these, you know, whatever. Um, and he only wants Casanova Frankenstein out so that he can get sponsorships, right? So he, like that's uh, Yeah. The, so he can put him back in jail. 
which backfires immediately. Um, uh, amazingly. <laughs> amazingly. It's amazing. Uh, Captain Amazing. I very I for most of this movie thought that it was Stellan Skarsgård, but it is of course Jeffrey Rush who plays Casanova Frankenstein. I was like, wow, uh, <laughs> uh, Stellan Star- Skarsgård looked great in 1999. He didn't. It was Jeffrey Rush the whole time. Uh, I think. Uh, like, Why do I want to fuck Stellan Skarsgård? Like, oh, wait, I don't. <laughs> Whenever I hear like, Greg, do I? Whenever I hear Greg Kinnear, I can only think of Greg King Lear, the weird. <laughs> <laughs> the, in Bojack Horseman, one of them writes a, a play called Greg King Lear, and it's Greg Kinnear in it. It's very funny. Anyway, <laughs> I have I have I told this on the show before that I have an irrational hate of Greg Kinnear. Yes, you have. Well, he and does. Have, so, I mean, this is which also was one great. of those movies where I get it though, because I'm like, he probably hates Greg Kinnear because of this movie, because he's such an no. asshole. <laughs> It's actually not this movie. It's because of uh, As Good As It Gets. But that movie came up before this movie. So when I saw him playing a dickhead, I was like, fucking Greg Kinnear. He plays a dickhead uh, in almost everything he's Pretty in. much everything. I think that's it's one of those things where like... By all accounts, though, he's pretty nice in real life. He's like, probably he's a, a great guy. Okay, Greg, look, <laughs> I'm talking to you right now, buddy. I think... Did he... I think we're good. Did I've he hated do you for the voice years. for Greg King Lear? Let's see. Probably. <laughs> Greg Kinnear is in the most recent season of uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm playing like a waiter or like a lawyer or something. Like some crazy small bit part. Like he, he'll do anything. He's a, um, he's speaking a, of Jeffrey Rush, though, he's an Academy Award winning actor. Jeffrey who, Rush is. Of he, it is voiced by Greg Kinnear. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it sounds like something Greg Kinnear would do. Like, he'd be like, of course I'll do that. That sounds hilarious. Yeah, Bojack had Bojack had like a who's who of, of guest yeah. stars. Like one of well, the, the one of the characters who does like the dog man in that show is in he's the squeegee man. Like, do you feel it's power? That's the guy who does the dog in, in Horseman. I thought Mr. the dog guy was well, I thought yeah. Mr. Peanut Butter was Paul F. Tompkins. It is Paul F. Tompkins. Well then I'm thinking of a different stand-up comedian. <laughs> Paul F. Pumpkins. Yeah, Paul F. Pumpkins. Uh, the um, boys argue speaking. about their powers Sorry. in a diner. Ben Stiller. Uh, no, Wait, I want to talk about Jeffrey Rush amazing. for a second. <laughs> yeah, of course. I just want to. We're at the diner now. I've moved us to the diner. Jeffrey Rush is an Academy Award winning actor who definitely does whatever the fuck he wants because he's some of the most likable and interesting characters that have ever danced across. He's like a Gary Oldman or a Sam Jackson. Yeah. Like he's he's got this level of yeah he's got a level of prestige where he can he can do something like this and be like this isn't going to affect me even if it sucks i don't care well he says pirates of the caribbean that's a great character um and then like you have the king's speech which is like oscar bait movie Mm -hmm. um yeah it's just also a good movie and he's a he's a character actor like he's just a very famous well-known character actor so yeah I was confused when Gary, I just watched uh, Rise, whatever the second Planet of the Apes, and Gary Oldman's just in it. And I'm like, what are you doing slumming it? Then the movie's great. And then I was like, oh, okay. Not I love that. Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. I like that you play. think that the Planet of the Apes movies is slumming it for some reason. I Why thought that they were going to be bad, dude. I thought that the two middle apes movies were just like garbage. And then they were both fucking tearjerker fucking you know when they make a movie spectacles. and then they make another one and then another one after that like it doesn't mean it's like a saw syndrome if especially when it's that or shark of, it's that always good. going yeah. <laughs> every movie worse than the last nope that third monkey movie made me tear up steve zahn as as bad ape Ooh, baby that got some tears out of me yeah <laughs> Steve like, Zahn favorite character plays... of the last 10 years bad ape bad ape Love bad played by ape. steve zahn oh my god steve zahn plays a cat named snowball i think <laughs> <laughs> just carry on guys. anyway but they're up. at the diner they have some diner moments uh they have that this like we, there's like yeah we... obviously he's lance reddington 10 10 lance, lance hunt reddington. yeah he's like lance hunt it's because he is lance hunt and he's like that doesn't make any sense he wears glasses and he's like he takes them off when he transforms and he's like that doesn't make any sense he wouldn't be able to see wouldn't be able to like, see 
And you're like, this is great that they're establishing in this world of superheroes that there are people that are so naive that are, you know, they're willing to believe that because they've convinced themselves of that. Yeah. Because they don't want to. The Clark Kent thing. Too. When he's holding the two washers, though, I later was in the laughing. Movie, so, and I was laughing out loud at that. So he he puts them. It's in the background, them. too. Yeah. So he sees like him with the glasses, and then the shuffler just asks him. Uh, are you Lance? Are you Lance Hines? Whatever. And he's like, yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I've always wanted to do that. that he really says, I've always bad. wanted to do that. Like, why? Why would you always want to do that as Captain Amazing? Okay, Steve Zahn plays a cat named Monty, and Snowball is his best friend, also a cat in Stuart Little. That's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's Steve Zahn. Ben cat. Stiller goes after the Disco Boys. We also, I just want to talk about, like, there's a part where... Uh, they're all, you know, he, this is another uh, a moment where uh, we get a great sort of um, Ben Stiller comedic, his his whole shtick, I guess, up until this point and beyond and up until now is that like his characters are meant to be grounded in reality, but he has like a little bit more insight into comedic timing than a regular human would have. But he does always have those moments of like, having to to bumble around a little a, a little bit before he can he can reach that comedic gold and we get it again here where he's trying to you know he's like I didn't know I was hanging around with the uh, lazy boy and uh hold on hold on everybody wait I I got it. it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming the and, recliner uh, and the recliner That's what... <laughs> yeah. the recliner and he's like so proud of it and, and I got to say it is a very good line but Everyone's gone before they can hear it. There's but, something about these 90s movies that have that. Like Kevin Smith also has the where he's like shooting insults and then he's like, ah, and he's gone. Like, but he very, keeps yelling until he leaves. I mean, today they would call it overworked, right? Because like you you look at movies now that are comedies and it, it, it everything is meant to feel very naturalistic. And if it doesn't, it's bad. Or if it's like too funny. People are like, that's overworked and you 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 didn't let them improv enough and you get them into it enough. But like this, because of ev everything being so overblown and extra, it, it feels cartoonish and you want those sort of like strategically timed and like mathematically equated times of like silence before the joke comes because everything feels that way. Everything feels calculated. And like even behind them, like while this is happening, there's a, bl a blimp that's moving behind them that, that says like, Captain Amazing has saved the city <laughs> again. <laughs> like it's like slowly like like panning over the blimp. And like if you just pay attention to the blimp, the blimp alone is funny. <laughs> but the scene that's happening in front of you is also just as funny, if not funnier. I don't know. Maybe the blimp is funnier, but, you know, you guys tell me. Uh, ben Stiller. Uh, <laughs> no, no one. No, well, yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I like the, I like that uh, the jokes. It's like how, how Dan Harmon writes his comedy, like uh, Community and Rick and Morty, where like the thing that's happening is happening, but there's all this stuff happening in the background, or these like these little callbacks all the time that you can weave a bigger, a bigger story. That's what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode where. The, the world building in this movie, even though it's such a small scale story, it feels like you're in this huge universe yeah. of things happening, you know, which which I really enjoy. It's one of the things that keeps me engaged in in a lot of TV, especially when you what now that they're adapting video game uh, movies properly to television with The Last of Us. And video Fallout. game movies to television. Video games to television. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> now that they finally adapted uh, the what the fuck House of the Dead to a TV series. Just kidding. Yeah, we I all want to see House of the Dead, the TV the series, movie, the TV show. Episodes long. It's all. Uh, first my point is, is knowing when you just do a little reference to something from the game. Yeah. I think that that you're you're able to open so much in your mind that you don't have to say right I think into the show. My point here is that like the the foreground comedy that we're getting and we appreciate and it is funny. There is also a joke happening in the background that yeah will like, almost always. But go Noel brought up with anyway. the with him holding up the little the little washers to be like, is that 
I'm trying to put the glasses on him. It does become a joke in the movie, but like for a, a long time during that se- that sequence, they're having a conversation, right? And you just see the shoveler in the background going like, it's good. You're right. It's good. Um, also, the Disco Boys. The, the introduction of the Disco Boys. Everything about the Disco Boys is the best. It's the best gang. Out of all the gangs, it's the best gang. They're and, fighting dance choreography together yeah. in the hallway. And even just like the way that uh, like like Izard comes out and is like ding, 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 and like goes around and then like goes up to the phone and like everything about this is also very queer and good, like in like a very sort of like sexual way. Everything they do is kind of sexual, which I'm into. And they, <laughs> they go up to the phone and they just like, like knock the, the phone off the receiver and then just start like aggressively hitting the numbers before they pick up the receiver. Well, I mean, the disco... have you ever done that? It's very liberating. I've done it because of this movie. Uh, I don't think I can say I have, but I mean, like the death of disco came about because of racism and homophobia. So like the fact that the disco is so like gay coded in this movie makes sense. And the day, the day disco died, like it's, it's it's such a funny thing to me because it was a bunch of people who liked bands, like, like shitty white dudes with long hair who wore like Led Zeppelin shirts went to an arena and brought all these disco records and burned them. They and damaged disco... the, the baseball stadium as well because yeah. vinyl doesn't burn well. No, it melts into a blob. <laughs> and the thing is, the thing is that's funny to me is disco never really died. It just evolved into new wave and then it evolved into EDM. And then disco came back through that, you know, like, Disco never died. It just sort of changed and it would have changed anyway, the same way rock and roll has changed the same way. Any kind of genre of music changes. Um, But I love, I've personally always loved disco. I think disco is a fantastic genre of music. I think that, I think that the Saturday night fever vision or view of disco is kind of shitty because the people in Saturday night fever are all shitty, like jockey weirdos. Like think of John Travolta and his crew in that movie. <clears throat> They're all kind of shitty people. That version of disco sucks. But the version of disco that's just like going out to a nightclub and it, whether it be like a gay club or whether it be just going to uh, a non-gay club or a gay club, not gay. Ah! Ah! I realized that I was I was what sounding you, bad. What are you working on there, bud? I know that's what happened there. Uh, Lazy my point boy is, and the recliner. <laughs> Lazy boy and the recliners. My point is, is uh, music is just music. I think, and anybody can enjoy music. Speaking and disco of disco never died. and other things, um, the writer of the comic, what's his name? Bob, Bob Burton. Burn- he Bob was saying that Burton. he would have liked uh if he could do it again paul thomas anderson to do this movie to direct okay. it how different i mean i feel like that's been. what anyone would say about any movie <laughs> right i think it's because he liked boogie nights right now you thought oh that so he wanted work. the whole thing to be like disco-y i guess so it is like, no. you know that vibe i don't but I feel like- the disco thing like like other things in this movie it's it is making fun of it but it's with love like this movie yeah, whereas nothing... shrek is entirely built on hatred like this movie is built with a lot of like love for the genre and like absolutely delicacy with the things yeah there, this, there's nothing this that movie feels abrasive is... or, or uh corrosive it, it all feels like it's 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 embraceive of, of everything it's doing like even the stuff that it's making fun of like the schumacher things it's like no we're not gonna make fun of that we're just gonna utilize that as something that's part of our world and are we never we're gonna be like look at the nipples on that giant statue holding up that bridge or whatever like they're never gonna like make fun of it it's just there it's part of the world i was watching this through a lens that was sort of like the joel schumacher thing but also imagine if this was a guardians of the galaxy and instead of it being like 70s music it is 70s disco music. And if you remade this now, like if you just straight up remade this movie, you would have like a soundtrack come out on vinyl that is the Mystery Men 
and it's all the all disco tracks you know like that's how i was kind of uh uh watching this my favorite and my vote is a beers my, <laughs> my two favorite gangs are the um the fr the frat boys uh yeah. i think they're hilarious when they're like can we bring the brewskis when they're moving to the other room and he's like yes of course you michael bay yes, you may absolutely bring the <laughs> The yes. and Michael then Bay. the the business guys who will downsize anything it was yeah. led by big tobacco <laughs> it's just this movie so fun oh. big tobacco. Casanova i don't like the love story can i say that the love story well the weird. love story it feels fucking jammed in and she but she is sort of is the it studio pin. notes i don't know because it just it feels a lot like we need to get the rage guy to stop being such a uh he's like an incel kind of energy before incels were a thing he's got that like um he, he's like a milady guy a little bit because she's like what's your name and he's like phoenix phoenix dark, dark lighter <laughs> dark a lighter poser, dark, poser dark. wannabe yeah. well yeah. so this is also the the crushing the mutilation almost of like incel energy and uh, toxic masculinity is that he's even seeing his own shitty traits presented through her physical reactions being like, you're gross. Like I don't, this is, I was intrigued by you for a moment, but now you've gone back into that. Shitty I think that's what it is. That I don't like, I think she li literally is like, I it's not, I think you. that's what it is. That is what it is. <laughs> it's what it is. She's a foil for you. that character. Yeah. yeah, and it's I, like I could be into you if you just drop the the act. And as soon as he mm -hmm. drops the act, she's like, "I like you," and that's what it is a lot of the time. And that's the thing about incels is like nobody could like me. I'm dumb and and ugly, and now I have to band together with other people like me on the internet and hate women. And that's, you know, <laughs> uh -huh. a slippery slope. <laughs> oh, so unlike other movies of this time period, she doesn't change him. She no. he doesn't wear her down with his bullshit. Like there's a he lot realizes of those, in real time. Yeah, there's a a lot of those tropes that just aren't present, even though the love story feels like maybe it's also a commentary, like there has to be a love story in this, but we're gonna do it our way. Um, and then she just kind of shows up at the end, like a little right. bit Martha -y, well, but still <laughs> Yeah, they I it, they kidnap her, I guess, for just to for the stakes to be risen. There's yeah, no real for reason him for to get to angry. Yeah. yeah. Like um I but I also feel like the reason that this is happening is it is a Ben Stiller vehicle at the end of the day, but we also get a lot of like really nice wholesome home moments with the Blue Raja and the Shoveler that we never get from him and the idea is that he doesn't have a home. Like he's He's nothing like we we never see him go home. We see him the lone wolf rides yeah. alone. <laughs> there's there's an implication of this movie where he actually is homeless and he's just like goes into a garage and sleeps next to his bike. Like we don't know what his house looks mm -hmm. like. And then he goes and just has that lady being like, junk it, junk it or whatever. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, no. Um, and it's it is it's very sad because, you know, as much as we we want to see these people triumph over over evil we we know that uh the blue raja has his mom who cares very deeply for him as we see at the end when she gives him the the silverware and everything and we know that the shoveler has a beautiful wife and family who he you know like has an extremely good relationship with but it's like They're so cute they that are family also that family is, is so, cute. so loving i mean we haven't when talked she about puts the, the rubber gloves much. on his face i'm like i want someone to put rubber gloves on my face we haven't talked much about the shoveler, but he is the one of the best characters in He's a superhero so movie. Yeah. You know like, who he is. <laughs> you know William who he H. Is. Macy, yeah. We've seen He's him Captain. Movies. He's Captain America. He's like the three. Oh, yeah. He's the working man. Captain He's the blue America. collar Captain America. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I when I was a kid, for some reason, I like really liked the shoveler. For, I don't know why. Maybe William H. Macy is just amazing, which he is. But I remember as a kid being like, wow, hey, he's got a black family. That's really interesting. You don't see that often. Because in 1999, I feel like they were playing that as a joke. Nowadays, 
doesn't it, it's not as a joke, a joke. Right? i don't, I don't think, think so, so. Yeah, no. at first i, when I, I was had a kid that... i thought when i was a kid i thought <laughs> well, it's this, because you oh, came like, from this... rural nova scotia <laughs> where everyone was white <laughs> no no i see what Fair. point you're trying to make and i wasn't sure when i was watching it if the movie was like see we're that's what i mean like that's putting it mean. out there it's a very very intentional choice um, for sure. And we can't know, but like on this watch, I didn't find it. Like I didn't have that Absolutely reaction not. that I had then. In and 2024, think... it doesn't play like, oh, get it? He's I... white and he's got a black I remember wife. when I was get a kid, it? I had a very good friend who had a black mom and a white dad. And like, yeah. so for me, I was like, this is just a family. Like, I, I never felt that way, but I definitely I, I, now can see. I the... happen to be mixed race myself. Wait a minute. But... Are you telling me you have a black mom and a white dad over here? No, actually, that's not that's not the combination. But oh, <laughs> um, but I do think there's something to what Jason is saying, though. I do think it was played a little bit as a whoa bait and switch. You know? Not necessarily a joke, I but definitely a as, as yes. what you would call like a as people now scream from the tops of their I don't know internet connections wokeness like that 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 is like this movie's so woke man it's like the equivalent to like making like a a a black president and you're like is it a black president? Proto I guess woke? it's proto woke, but like at the proto same woke. time, like it's wokeness is not. That's bad. a month. I don't know. No wokeness. That's a month isn't... of movies. But that's proto wokeness. Whole... <laughs> that's a whole different <laughs> podcast. Yeah, um, we're all right here on this. On but the, sh- sh- this but the shoveler is also like he's just he is Captain America, but then he's making that egg salad sandwich and that speech that he makes with the egg salad sandwich of like, am I gonna like work hard or am I gonna kill myself with this egg salad sandwich over time because yeah. it's got such high cholesterol? Like, and then my favorite line in the whole movie, I think, is when they kill Captain Amazing and they're like, we killed him, and he's like, I was standing over here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> what do you mean there? we? I was standing over also, here. <laughs> side note about the cholesterol thing that's so 90s to be it's like so cholesterol's 90s. bad for you is like such an old, that and, is, and yeah. antiquated yeah. antiquated health nonsense that was in that's the also 90s, like a like, simpsons joke isn't it where he's like i just saved you from dying of cholesterol and he's like well you know scientists don't agree if scientists I... don't agree on it <laughs> yeah do you want to move the plot along a little bit <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sorry. is this about more Disco Boys or the Casanova Frankenstein and the Disco Boys? What uh, a great name, Lee. Casanova Frankenstein. Shit. La 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 la. You can only play licensed music for like three seconds. Man. I did it. I did it for three exact seconds. Oh fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they so so. The rate I wrote uh, Roy the Rager. I couldn't get his name until I was like Mr. Furious or whatever. Roy the Rager sees they're doing, he follows them, uh, the Disco Boys, and he sees they're doing some weird plot where they just blow up the asylum. And uh, Captain Amazing shows up and he's tries got a lot to of good uh, like, arrest like, Casanova and gets chloroform for his trouble. And then we find out, are we not going to talk about this in scene at all? This, like, the meeting of the old, the old. Uh, the old guard and villains of the city. Like this is this is yeah. this is the stage setting for uh, Champion City as a whole, right? Like, why why do the mystery men exist? It's this kind of old fighting, right? Like it's a billionaire who's who's grown too powerful and become too well known that he's now inflated by corporations. Perfect. And a man who literally went insane in prison no, because he no, was surrounded Steve and by- I had a conversation many months ago where I said I'm going to take less notes and then Steve was like great then I can interject and say the things I want to say but every time I take less notes now he's like are we just going to move past this and it's I, I took no know, notes for I'm this movie gonna fill, I'm going <laughs> to fill I in some notes I know but the whole point what I'm, what I'm trying to say is Steve you're supposed to just say I'll interject and fill in some stuff not like are we gonna gonna just sit here and let jason tell me what i am and i'm not supposed to do i think that we need to talk about this interaction absolutely go ahead oh i thought noel wanted to say something you were pointing your fingers around so i thought you wanted to say something Um, i think i was going to talk about batman so just carry on (laughs) i mean it is a very batman thing right where he like (laughs) 
what he says something like uh what what does casanova say he's like standing by the f- fireplace and he's like ah yes a very good tom collins like he like he's like almost like he scripted out what he's gonna say like he knows captain amazing is gonna bl- blast through the door and he does and he says uh even when it's sucked by scum with like you or, or something like that and then they have their uh their back and forth i want to know what you guys feel about this back and forth and and what does it feel like to you does it feel comic booky or does it feel comedic in the writing it felt very much like uh it's meant to be very funny and it is quite funny. right but it, it also feels very much like captain amazing is going through the motions to just keep his endorsements and it, he never reveals it to mr to uh, frankenstein that i just re- got you released so i'd have somebody to like collect and yeah be on a billboard again what was his end game with that that's a question he puts captain, captain amazing frankenstein. Yeah, he puts Casan he puts Casanova Frankenstein back in prison, and then what? He just his stay of execution is just like a week. He's yeah, he's thinking very short term, right? Like he releases Casanova only for because he knows Casanova is going to do something, and then he puts so him here, away. Here's a plot. Here's a plot. If if Casanova if uh, if Captain Amazing doesn't die in this movie, or if they redo this, I think it would have been better for him to vilify the Mystery Men when they're lowly superheroes at this point he doesn't even know he he can't even remember them he doesn't remember them i know i'm i'm saying like a reboot like a reimagining of this story instead of bringing out some old villain maybe he does that but he also tries to vilify the mystery men and make them look like they're doing bad deeds then he has then he becomes the villain himself that would be that would be an interesting i think that i think that that doesn't Sorry, no, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just a commentary on Batman's villains and the rogues yeah. galleries and yeah. how they keep going to Arkham and they keep coming out and they keep going to Arkham. Oh, absolutely. And he's yeah. just trying to get into that cycle. But then Casanova blows up the Arkham. So now you can't do that. Now you can't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just like, so that scene to me, like I didn't take it's take too much stock in it. Because it's just, uh, for me, it just sets the scene of like, okay, so we know that Captain Amazing is too big for his britches and he thinks that he's in control of the situation. He for sure isn't. He, like, because he's put away everybody he thinks he's got, like, he was just like, I know everything that you've got. And then, like, completely misses, like, the chloroform thing. Um, So he's just like a a gross, narcissistic dude who just underestimates this guy who he's let out. But I, the, the end game, I thought, was just, your usual superhero thing like they're just your rogues gallery is just going to keep coming back right yeah i i agree with what you're saying what i think though is that he is like incredibly short-sighted like he's he doesn't think to next week he thinks about okay how can i get this how can i get my numbers up in the next two days well, he's got a manager and a publicist and or whatever the hell that's supposed it's very to be doing the boys. that. And then he's gone rogue and tried to make the decisions. But clearly his like whoever's negotiating the deals killed, and all yeah. that, it's not him. Right. Like he's yeah. a very sanitized, put together package by much smarter people. He is like a corporate creation, basically. Yeah. This movie, this movie as like a season of the boys would have been cool. Obviously, they can't do it now to, to because of where Homelander, like where the story is. But this, like Homelander being Captain Awesome and, uh, and Captain Amazing, <laughs> it's and... fu- I think it's funny they call him Captain Awesome. <laughs> awesome, Same and thing. and I think an interesting <laughs> season of the boys would have been like if the the kid the kids from the university were starting to do like crime fight, and he was like, I don't like that, and then they do basically just the Mystery Men movie. Right. but the, a little bit more hardcore i think that would have I been mean, that's kind of what happens at the end of that first season is like he shows up to be like no you guys are not true me. yeah yeah uh anyway mystery men and and the boys are, are they're two 20, completely different almost 25 years apart but they're like also. they're very different entities <laughs> as well like they're but not, yeah the the thing that i was reading like the most recent um It was because of the boys. Like someone went back into Mystery Men because they were like, okay, so the boys is a thing now. 
let's talk about uh like an ancient ancestor of that sort of thing and then yeah. they wrote this little piece about that so the fact that you guys are drawing that line that it's oh it's i it's, i think they're, mystery they're related man. Is, mystery men is like dna the, is the, more the, so than like any marvel yeah. or DC mystery men is like the beginnings of the boy it's like the same idea at the same yeah. like it and it's I, it's different, Flaming, but it is. But I think Flaming Carrot was Dark Horse. Yeah, it's, dark, Dark it's Horse all of that stuff became Dark Horse Comics. Yeah, which is DC side. Oh, I just mean like intellectually, like in terms of like a thought process for like a superhero. What can a superhero be? Like, what if a superhero became controlled by a corporation? That's what the boys is about. That's what this is about. And this is about like, what about the 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 cool people that are just like you and me? Like when I watch this movie, I don't for a minute uh think that i i couldn't be one of those superheroes in that backyard when they're doing their their uh their quest to to bring someone in like i i could be there and they could you choose could me pencil head i could be but son of pencil head <laughs> think of the idea that like um, that's doug jones by the way doug jones everyone think of the idea that um like the mask the comic book version which also i believe is dark horse is very adult and flaming carrot was like for adults then you know and this is sort of a homogenized version of those comic book characters the way the mask movie is a homogenized like i want to see the mystery men done the adult version like a deadpool style where they i like this where they the way it is i like the way i like this movie but i want to see i want to see a more hardcore like a uh, you think we're going to get a mask movie that's like right from the source you have the boys you have the boys already. You True. don't need you don't need another the boys. The mystery man is its own thing. Like don't you don't need to worry about having No, I'm talking more so about like back of their fucking ears or whatever. Like the, the source material being made like Deadpool was was homogenized and they made the shitty Wolverine uh version of him, the X-Men Origins Wolverine version of him. But then Marvel made an R-rated well Fox made an R-rated uh once they got the rights, that R-rated version of Deadpool. I'd like to see an R-rated version of Mystery Man that's more based off the comic books now, like made now with better gra- with better special effects, and have a flaming carrot character. Did you see those monkeys in those Planet of the Apes movies? <laughs> wow. I gotta go wow. to the washroom. CGI I'll be right nowadays, I'll tell you. I don't know the difference anymore. Uh, oh. Unless it's Marvel, then you can really tell. Then it's bad. Then it then they're filming in that weird fucking TV yeah. dome. So to your thing of um, like you want to see this movie make a choice on whether it's an adult movie or a kid's movie. In the thing that I was reading, I really wish I remember where it was and who it was that wrote it. So sorry. But um, they were saying that the marketing for this movie, no one could decide what it was. Like, do we market it towards adults? Do we market it towards kids? And so the marketing was really bad. And that's one of the reasons they say that it did so poorly in theaters. I mean, it also came out against The Sixth Sense, The Iron Giant, and The Blair Witch Project. So, Which are all like hits, like certified fucking hits. Exactly. Like classics that we look back to now. Like, yeah. was there anything bigger than The Sixth Sense and The Blair Witch Project at the time? The Blair Witch Project, like, was so big that people thought like it redefined the like like a uh, mockumentary genre it was a master class it invented in the found footage genre yes but movies. then they also had that website that you could go to that like had the Blair Witch like it just like absolutely amazing marketing that was done so simply like um the the next master class in marketing would be Barbie, like yeah. <laughs> like that. But it's absolutely. literally, you already have the leg hundred years of Barbie as the you know what I mean. So I, I'm with it, you. It, it's kind of like a UHF go UHF fantastic comedy goes up against fucking Batman eighty nine. You're done. You're you're cooked, buddy. Yeah. Weird Al, then, you should have come out the next weekend. And <laughs> even the previous the giant, weekend. I think couldn't. Co- but you, so you have a kids movie, and then you have like a family movie, like basically, and then you've got like a, a an edgier like teen movie. There's no place for mystery men to fit in, like any of those markets. Like maybe if Iron Giant hadn't come out, then you would have this in place, and the kids would have gone to see this. But they didn't. They went to see Iron Giant. 
your adults went to see the sixth sense yeah. teenagers who also could have been brought into the mystery man world went to see the Blair Witch Project. Like well, it's that's a good that's a kind of a good question. Like who's this movie for? Me. There's like a yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that's so. three clearly. There is a like a good argument that 1999 is one of the best movie movies or movie years that ever existed in all of movie history. If you uh, look Frozen at that, Two didn't come into in 1999, so but it could have. <laughs> But, it but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm pretty sure Half Baked came out in 1999. So I'm not even joking though. When you look at Doctor said they need a bacchiotomy. <laughs> when you look at 1999, get away from me, bitch! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Steve. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna put my disco boy's costume back on and just pretend I'm a disco boy. You riled um, us up. You got us going. I just left for a second and came back, and you guys were so rude. Um, yeah, the year happened. 1999. The disco Boys back together is arguably one of the best movies for for uh, or video. Oh, God damn years, it. yes, years for. I keep almost saying video games because I've been talking about video games the last two days. Um, ever, ever in all history of movies, uh, it's it's one of the best years for movies ever. And if you look at it, it's almost undeniable because you can't. Ooh, really eyes wide them. shut. Yeah. <laughs> the Matrix. The Matrix. The talented Mr. Ripley. He was talented, talented that Mr. year. Matrix. Girl interrupted. Virgin suicide. Matrix interruption. The Vir Magnolia. The Matrix. Suicide, ma the, the, Matrix. the Green Mile. Drive me crazy. She's all that classic. Okay, I'm on board for She's this. She's all Matrix. What yeah. <laughs> about Mystery Man in Star Wars Episode One and Man on the Moon? Man on the Moon, yeah, that's a good movie. That's a, a Midsummer's film. Night's Dream, Annie. This isn't. It's a hard movie. knock life. Yeah, I feel oh, like you're just reading was... movies, and that. What the hell's going <laughs> yeah, that's just that's American just Beauty. Okay, that was not. Yeah, that was not. Was Jason, are you Runaway on the Bride, <laughs> Fight Club? Okay, Fight Club. yeah, this year. Where the can? <laughs> Big Daddy, oh, Notting Hill, Ten Things I Hate About You. Oh my God, this year is what a crazy movie year. Wild, yeah. Sleepy Big Hollow, Daddy. I watched Sleepy that. Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. We should do that on the pod one day. That's a yeah. awesome That's powers. The Spy one. Who Shagged Me is nineteen ninety nine as well. It is. That came out the same weekend as Star Wars. Episode this one. Star who shagged the Star Who Wars to me. But I'm a cheerleader. Classic gay movie. Yeah. Yep. That has uh, what's her face from American Pie and uh, Russian Doll in it, right? Oh yeah, Poodle. Susan, Susan, Johnny, <laughs> Susan, Johnny. <laughs> Wild Wild West. Eh. That came oh, out of ninety nine yeah. as well. I saw Passport a lot of movies that year. Holy shit! Wild Wild West uh, is Olsen, the Superman remake. The the Olsen twins movie Passport to Paris came out this year. So. Hell yeah, brother! <laughs> Galaxy <laughs> Quest. Yeah, no. so you guys could probably bring that. Galaxy Quest Isn't did not come out in nineteen ninety nine. Well, then this thing is lying to me. Yeah. Office Galaxy Space? Plus, two weeks from now. Oh, that's Office right. Space. Yeah, that's a big one. Hold on. No. Galaxy Quest came out in like 1996. This is a this list is false. No. Damn it. Did Galaxy the internet Quest lie to me? I think it did. Did the How dare this it? This just sounds the like a list of some guy's movies that he likes. Anyway. Galaxy Quest 1999. Says it right here on Google. There's no way. Starring Alan Rickman and Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver and Sam Rockwell and Tony Shalhoub and Justin Long. I didn't know Justin, Justin Long. Justin no Long just is a jump scare in this time. Like for from 1999 to 2010, I think. Like he's just a jump scare in so many different movies. But then also from 2020 to now, he still sort of looks the exact same as he did in 1999. Yeah. He's one of those like Keanu Reeves. Uh, Nicholas Welcome Cage to phenomenal, Justin phenomenal. Longcast. Just... Justin Longcast. Imagine, <laughs> I bet you if we made a Justin Longcast, Tusk. we could probably get Justin Long to come on yeah. if we tried hard enough. He would probably. Like, you guys see Tusk? A barbarian? <laughs> like, yeah. I saw Tusk. I'm too scared. What? Why barbarian. would you make a voice like that? Those movies are both good. <laughs> Tusk is. I mean, Tusk, Tusk exists. Is... I think there are acquired taste movies. Tusk is an a, Tusk is an incredible movie because it got made uh, because Kevin Smith and uh, made a joke on Smodcast that that would that would be a great movie. Um, yep. With uh, Scott Moyer, Scott Mosier, 
Is that his name? Yep. Um, it's incredible that that movie Jason got made. Get his way through this, <laughs> this story time <laughs> with Jason. It's incredible that that movie got made because of the fact that it was just him and Scott Moser riffing on a fucking podcast in 2000. And yeah, they found like nine. a letter in a newspaper or whatever, and it was it, was, it's a, it ended it's up like being an, fake, which is it's an urban legend kind of a thing that like this town had this eccentric millionaire. No, no, this, you, put an ad in a newspaper that he wanted somebody to come to his home and get. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Anyway, listen. Do we want to just get through some plot or because it's 10 o'clock? Yep. All right. Roy works at the junkyard. That's a funny back and forth with the, with the woman. <laughs> junk do you like, do you like, like I swear to ball. God. I really like when he grabs the stress ball and he's like. <laughs> I like when she grabs his goggles and pulls him in really close and you can hear the like, oh, I'm not wearing my, I, I, yeah. I should be wearing it. The, the leather sound. And then she says, listen. I want it junked. <laughs> and he's like, junked. <laughs> and she's like, uh, got all these whisk, like wild whiskers coming out of her chin and stuff. It's, uh, it's frightening. That segment, uh, sort of Chekhov's guns, the, um, the thing that they use at the end, the like tank. It uh, shows the tank. Tom Waits' second most hilarious moment in the entire movie, which is like, wait a minute, you have a, a Witzer Wazzle? That's the finest non lethal. <laughs> like, <laughs> Could it His be whole thing is about like non-lethal weapons or whatever. The mystery machine. Yeah, it's the mystery. Yeah, machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's the finest uh, non-lethal battle weapon that's ever been made. I was two get... years old when I realized that it's mystery with two Y's. Is that how you? S- um. Yeah, mystery. Well, how do you spell mystery in your head? Put a y, an I in the front or is this? Back? Am I losing that's my mind? How you spell mystery? Is it? That's how you spell mystery. It is. I was today years old when I learned how to spell mystery. Am I the one who was wrong? No. No, 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 no. Casanova Franklin does the I am having a moment. Listen, why is a tricky letter and I don't like it? Have I just been reading too much Canadian fiction? Probably. Casanova Frankenstein does the old tell Captain Amazing is uh, plan before leaving him in the dark. The mystery men show up. They get their ass kicked by the disco boys. Uh, uh, Roy wants to uh, re- uh, retreat, so they do. The, we get the side plot with the waitress where he's like, well, let's go on our date. She's like, fuck no. You're weird and small. Uh, they take Invisible Boy. Reaction? She's in Mall Rats. She's the girlfriend. Is she? Yeah, she's a very, a very, show? very, very beautiful actor. English woman. She's English. She is. She has from Angleland. So, like, her and uh, Hank Azaria would hang out a lot on set because he was like, "Can I just ask you a question, please?" Is that true, correctly? or did you make that up? Uh, I think he actually did. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I can't tell if that's a factoid <laughs> or like, you're just shitting with us. He's Shit, trying to yeah. slam. But also they him and uh, uh Janine is it Garofalo? Yeah, Garofalo. I, I never know she's if it's in Garofalo. Also, yeah. Janine Garofalo is on this podcast right now. So oh, because Noel kind of looks right. Noel looks a little bit like Janine Garofalo. You also have the attitude of Janine. <laughs> yeah, you I think your attitude is more Janine Garofalo. Well, you know, you kind of look like her too a little bit. Yeah, uh, I thought that too. And I was like, I've had green hair. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she just have like the front parts as green? No, she just has it's, random green yeah. fucking <laughs> strands. It's great though. Can we just for one moment? I, I think we've we haven't really talked about the fact that Janine Garofalo in 1999 she was like peak star in the world of comedy and for her to do a movie like this this whole ensemble she just is kind of the crown jewel of the she's kind of the star of this of this thing i think well she's also the only kind of real superhero of the team true she also is the one that destroys the machine at the end she's the princess leia She's the only like woman. She's with Princess lines. Leia if she didn't get <laughs> the only woman. Princess in the Leia whole didn't movie. get hiked back that's... at the planet Yavin at the end of the movie. And no, the, no, th- could... that's what. Okay, can I just say, all the new movies are fan service. What do you think Leia in a bikini was? 
Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Absolutely. Sorry. Correct. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I was going to say about service. wokeness earlier. Where I'm like, oh, Rise of Skywalker couple? <laughs> is not that bad, guys. In 20 How can we never see right Han Solo in a goddamn thong? Um, Libs. I meant that she's the only like female character with the story. Like she's yeah. the only centered focus. This movie does lady. not pass the Becknell test. I'll tell you that right now. It passes the Becknell test though, in that it's a rom. <laughs> That's, <what I> said. <laughs> That's our new standard, the Becknell test. Yeah. Becknell test. Yeah. That's the name of next month. In fact, <laughs> the Becknell <laughs> test. Um, she's a I great think... character. Like you're right. She she destroys the machine. They don't believe in her. They do the classic like lady thing, but I'm really pleased that they don't do what movies are about to start doing a lot, where like it's a mask and then comes in and like does the thing and then takes it off and it's a wo- 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 woman. Task like, ma- like, Taskmaster. They didn't do and, any and Black of Widow. that. I kind of like that. Like these doofuses, like this group of guys, when she comes in, they immediately are like, "No, go away." Sorry, and then she's like, "Okay, well, fuck you." And like, she immediately like, bowling ball attack. Fuck you, because she's probably dealt with it like every day of her life. Like, fuck this. Opens opens the the ball bag up and throws the the ball at, at them, and then everybody is like, "Wait, wait, wait! Come, 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 come over here! Come here! Come here! Come here!" Come here. This and is, then toxic uh, masculinity guy is like, "No, we still don't want you." And then she corrects him, like a couple of times throughout the yeah. conversation. Yeah, and then they're like, "You're in." The and then one. when she when she corrects him like a third time, all of them like put their hands out to be like, "You're yeah, come on, you're you're on the team." And interestingly, do you know what? Sorry, go ahead, Steve. My bad. No, if you want to interrupt, that's fine. I don't. I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, she's a second generation superhero, which I always enjoy. Yes. Not unlike the Rat Woman in <laughs> the Suicide Squad, very similar. The rat catcher is the name. Silk Spectre <laughs> too is also also Silk character. Spectre and Silk. So that's much more sad than these two characters, though, of course. Because we don't Silk really Spectre. understand what the bowler. I, I mean, I assume that her character is maybe like the daughter of the character from the comic book or something like that. Or is I could not tell you. Yeah, yeah. Like, is she made up for this movie, or is she like part? I had she... the same thought, and you don't know. Yeah, I, I mean. The thing is, is that it really doesn't matter because she it, it doesn't diffuse her power as a no. character in this movie. I think she's probably one of the most interesting characters. She's definitely one of the funniest characters, but she's also like got something going on there that that extends the story beyond what we have. And, and it even opens up a little bit of story beyond other characters like uh, Tony C, where he's like, hello. I'm the guy that gave your daddy the shaft. <laughs> like the, you know, and he's like, oh, hey, what the fuck? And like that guy has now been expanded as a villain. Like he's a villain, yes, but now he's like a bigger villain where you're like, oh, I want to see this guy get fucked up by her later on. This Go is ahead. probably too deep for this movie, but it's kind of like Captain Amazing is like your corporate sponsor guy. And then the bowler seems like a legitimate superhero fighting crime, but like on a much different scale, like much more of a like grassroots kind of superhero who met his like end. Like you have these two different kind of characters looming over these mystery men, which now I know is spelled with two Y's. <laughs> you were like M I S S T E R L I. How did you hey. spell mystery before? Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, dude. I am a college graduate, not like a university graduate, not an idiot. Like I can rattle off facts about stuff and tell you a whole bunch of shit, but I have no idea how to spell the word mystery. Freaking dumbass. <laughs> Listen, it's it's safe to assume that once in a while we have our slip ups with spelling. Okay. Mystery man, but I is how you spell mystery, stupid. Um, the PMS Avenger, like, did you like or did you not like? I was interested to know. Oh, yeah, we are at the point where it's they take they they get invisible boy and it was somebody enter the spleen. Also, wait, we had we one moment. 
when they go to his door, it's three grown men. They're like in their late thirties. Some of them are in their like maybe early fifties, mid forties. You can't really tell these guys they're, you know, they're old ish, but you don't know. And this kid opens the door and he's like, Oh, ever since I was a kid, I, I okay, come on in. And they all go in. And then he's like, dad, I'm going to my bedroom with three strange men. And the dad <laughs> is just like on the couch and you're like, okay. So you, you immediately <laughs> understand that like, he's already invisible to everyone in his life. So like you get that sort of like building uh, magic for this character, which I guess makes magic real in this world because like him feeling invisible is what causes him to be invisible. This is a real doc doctor strange origin story is what I'm saying. He also doesn't go invisible in like the invisible man way. He no, goes it's invisible. Like he, it's he like he disappears, disappears from, from reality. Here. No yeah. matter. Yeah. He's a, like Nightcrawler a little bit. Bamf. He <laughs> yeah. I know it was spelled Bamf, but it's boom. Snickety, snickety. Snick, snick, bub. <laughs> you can see that new episode of X-Men? Oh, man. Oh, I yeah, always I read it is. You thought it was too dark. No, it's it. just... I. It's comic book accurate, Noel. I... I, I, I no, it's... Oh. <laughs> It's spelled, listen, listen, guys, I know how it's spelled, but this is how it's pronounced. <laughs> Every time Nightcrawler goes into the night realm, it goes. <laughs> no, it's it's this. <laughs> when he when he teleports, yeah. X Men ninety seven is incredible, <laughs> but it's got it's so dark. Yeah. yeah. I was just with like, us, enjoy, I was but there's like, like a very large swath of time like, where we grew up be, so far. I, it's just I was like, oh, this is fun, this is fun. Oh my god! And then the last episode, I was like, happy oh, nation, oh, living oh, in a happy oh, nation. <laughs> yeah, it's the penultimate episode, though. We're almost done. Anyway, they're gonna reboot everything. I'm, I'm, I'm the invisible right boy. I, I sometimes I go to my parents. I'm like, you give me too much freedom. You treated me like I was invisible. This is what my bedroom looked like when I was a kid. I just had like comic panels like all over my bedroom. Like sometimes I'm like, the reason I am the way that I am now is because of you. Like you did this to me. Was there any licensed product behind him? I didn't really catch the it. invisible boy. Yeah. They probably like... went through every like invisible. We have, we can do the invisible slut or the invisible boy. Which one do you want? Those are the only two we have inv invested. I don't know if there was like stuff or stuff that like the art yeah, I don't know if there was put together. <laughs> this movie didn't, it'd be such the Pepsi stuff. I don't know if there was a lot of like product placement in this movie that I noticed anyway. Except for all over his jacket in that first scene, which is like, no, that's what you, I said. You got Reebok yeah. and yeah. No, yeah I, besides like they, that opening. They kind of yeah. did it in a Wayne's world way where you just put it all in one skit. Right. <laughs> One scene, it's all there. Everyone everything's paid for immediately. I have a headache. Try these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the I don't, Delaware. I don't think that, that toothpaste wasn't even real, was it? It was like whitey tidy whiteies. It, because yeah, I it was, want my teeth tidy... to look amazing. <laughs> no, it wasn't like... tidy whiteies, it was uh, <laughs> mighty whiteies. <laughs> okay, well. It was mighty whiteies, which I was like, oh I haha, -ha, underwear, haha. <laughs> Enter the spleen. The spleen's origin is hilarious. Huh? Uh, he who for smelt it was destined forever to. Well, this is also is this it. your other is this your other one? No. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Slightly problematic. It's a blink and you miss it. But know that I know I'm alone on the show. No, it's oh. not a blink and you miss it. What it is is a thing that was always happening forever before this and the, it's like it was a it was a punchline like it, it was like they they went for an easy punchline it's a little bit it's bad it's bad it's not good but oh orientalism. i gotta say though it's still kind of funny like it's still kind of funny. <laughs> orientalism is the word i was looking for that's what that blue russia character is like mm -hmm. look that up on the internet if you want to know more about why that's a problem that whole thing. this is just like you know uh being racist towards like roma, roma. gypsies and yeah yeah the the roma people so did you know that the character nightwing is half roma nightwing yeah because yeah. they're circus people of course <laughs> <God>. <laughs> jason 
Oh. <laughs> Did you know that the Roma people invented the song? Well, now I'm the only one on the show. So, right. yeah. have we got our sillies out? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even have any. I know what you mean. And, but there are movies that are wonderfully put together that are, that use it. And it's, it's unfortunate because even for me as a person that is, you know, like, that feels uh, grinded up Whoa. and kicked kicked oh. around. <laughs> no, no, no. Grinded up and kicked around by a movie sometimes when certain things are said or done. Uh, for a long time, I, I didn't have the compassion for that just because so much of what I like has been wrapped. Through. Like the Evil Dead series, for example, is something that uses that as uh, a storytelling element without ever having any kind of compassion for it. The movie drag you drag me to hell is almost completely uh, ingrained in using Roma culture as something that is like ooh spooky. Let's all bite our fingernails and but like I still love that movie and I feel I sometimes feel like guilt. I shouldn't say that I sometimes feel guilty. Almost every time now that I watch it, I feel guilty. I'm like, oh man, they really they really shouldn't well, be doing this. That's why they have those like words like problematic fave and and all of this because yeah. you can't you can't really go back into any of those movies without finding something right um yeah. but i feel like it just got worse like the 2000s were a lot worse a lot more irony poisoned um like it's you know well it's i don't like it but it's not a, it's not ruining the movie for me but it's like yeah. one of those moments where I'm like, uh, like in Clueless, they use the word, the R word the in time. the movie. Yeah. And well, we're going to do that next month. So, oh, so ne never mind. <laughs> I'll save my thoughts about uh, the fashion and all that. I, I agree, though, because I, you know, I, I love uh, I love the movie Drag Me to Hell. But I do every time I watch it think about every time i've heard how problematic it is like while i'm watching it now so it doesn't not affect me and like every time i am i'm like if i was to ever tell a story i i should make sure that i don't do this to up up a group of people mm -hmm. yeah i just think because, it's one of the things we have to mention you have to mention that like yeah. that's not cool and it's used in a movie that we love doesn't make us hate the movie but doesn't make us excuse that either I was having this thing where um, I was talking to my wife about what are we, what are terms that we use now that aren't going to be able to be used in ten years from now, and some we kind of brought Barf up some things boy. like <laughs> "come dragon," uh, man bat, <laughs> man bat, <laughs> and. And I think I think realistically, like uh, like calling calling things autistic uh, shouldn't be done anyway. But I think like that is going to be a, a what? changed <laughs> word in the future. No, that's like a that's a relatively new word that's going to be nomencl nomenclaturally changed again. Hold on, times. what are you saying? <clears throat> words calling that things are autistic. Words that we use now. That autistic is not be... a new word. What are you talking about? No, I, okay, that's just an example. Uh, and she said, she said, like, uh, gypsy, uh, right? Or, you know, and I'm like, that's already on the way out anyway. Um, so the, the idea that we're even still having this conversation now indicates that potentially that that is one of those things that we're in the process of eliminating. Uh, so it's interesting that when we go back and watch these movies and it, it you know it's good it's good that we're not hearing you know f slurs and r words and this and that it it does suck that they do that that this situation is happening in this movie when there it, it is so devoid of any sort of um untoward uh language right and the fact that he in 1999 of every every curse was from a aroma right like that was just the the go-to there's that a couple was the, different the, ones back but... then they used to say curses curses come from romas that's what they said <laughs> um we don't need to unpack it but it's 
like marginalized yeah, we communities, can... people of color, non-Christian, misunderstood right. religions, and 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 are like you're always going to go for the other and say like ooh because we don't understand it's it. It's spooky. Yeah, there's going to be some stuff coming off of this uh, this war in the Middle East that's going to be like can't say all that of this from the spleen. Come on, guys. That's just... yeah. Okay, but like. Like you were saying, there's not a lot of malice behind a lot of this. And it turns out I right. actually have three problematic things. So we've got two down. Um, we'll wait for <laughs> number three later. Well, here's the most problematic thing in the whole movie. Fucking Dane Cook jump scare. Do you know what I wrote? I wrote Dane Cook lame the waffler. That's what I wrote about him. Fuck Did that they just guy. let him like this? This is like before he was even like famous famous too. This is just like him just trying to be an actor. What probably... I think this was, because this whole segment, it, all the people there are or were comedians, up and coming performers, actors. I like, don't know who Pencil Head and Son of Pencil. That's Doug Jones. Oh, my bad. One of the best mime performers that ever existed and is Sorry. He's in every you single game of those horror movies. Yeah, right. I don't know who son of Pencilhead is. It's probably some fucking kid who's just whatever. <laughs> that kid's face, though, as soon as I saw it again, I hated that then, and it, it brought back like when he's like, "And son of Pencilhead," I was that made me like physically cringe because because oh, like Jason was like, "I could have done a better job as son of." That's Pencilhead. not what I mean. Uh, it was more so <laughs> just like I think that's one of those like repressed like memories that I didn't like then because it just he gave me the ick. Like when I so yeah. I didn't like when he came in and said I'm son of pencil head from behind him, but I do love when he grabs him by the shoulder. And then you you hear him say, "Did I do good?" And then his his dad says, "Yeah, I think they liked it." <laughs> like he takes, <laughs> takes him away. That's very good. There's, al there's also like the ballerina man where it's like this mysterious. Like that's, that's a little the bit. Only yeah, I didn't like, love yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. Also. Like, and then yeah. two Wonder Women, Wonder Women show up and they fucking have a basically a mud a mud sling fight. We Didn't don't know what like they're that either. Uh, yeah, we don't know what their powers are. We don't know what their super names. This scene were. might actually be my least favorite scene. Squeegee Man, PMS <laughs> yeah. Woman, like, Bowler shows up. Just... I made a note that the CGI actually holds up pretty well. And weirdly enough, like like from here on out. I don't have a lot of notes, so we could probably get we could probably just talk about the because the movie picks up after this. In my opinion, the first hour of this movie is kind of like frustrating world building if you've seen it a million times. In my in my final thought, I'm gonna say that like that's it, it bugs me, but if you've never seen this movie, it's great because it it the world building is fantastic. But I think the first half of this movie is like is kind of like redundant if you kind of know what's happened already. And that's just from like a, like, that's like a critical, I was having fun watching it, but Steve, we, you and I watched the first hour of this movie at your house that night, like two months, three months ago. Or remember when we were, we finished do, the movie. Yeah, I Cause I was like, I, I'm so going to do this fresh next my, year. Yeah, yeah, it was last year even. Yeah. It was so fresh in my mind, and I was and I actually here's a reveal. I'll give you guys a reveal. I watched the first 48 minutes of this movie on 1.5x speed. Sorry, what a huge reveal that is. I watched but, the first uh, 49 minutes of this movie with a mind crushing migraine. <laughs> I watched. This well, movie I watched the first three 50 times minutes. this week. How's that for a mind crushing reveal? Yeah, but when you watch the first two times, like you, you didn't even have to pay attention to the movie most of the times that you watched it. I had to pay attention. It's because I've, I've seen it a million times, yes, but I wanted it to be resonating in my head. And I would have loved if all three of us could have fucking sat down and watched this together because we could have been talking I about it. I had a things. migraine. <laughs> I had a migraine too. What do you want from me? I had that to sounds watch like a headache. If you were able three. to watch a movie. That sounds like a headache. That's not like okay. Yeah, I know what a migraine is. God damn it. Um, I liked the line that uh, he fell down an elevator shaft onto some bullets. Like I don't, I didn't write any context. It's a classic. Uh, but I liked yeah. that. You're right. I think the pacing is a little. It's like 
it doesn't hurt you. It's not like the pacing of a Marvel series. Like it's not right. like what the hell is this? But it is a little start and stop. After it's you like get past yes, almost like yeah, after you get past this sequence, the movie becomes fucking so fucking amazing. Like it is an amazing. It's a great movie, but it goes from like okay, yeah. I've seen this to oh my god, this, this is, is they're doing stuff now. Yeah. Well, yeah, they get the yeah. it's an origin story, so you're right. Like they get the team together, and then that's when they go to the Sphinx and get, um, like the the montage, like the training right. sequence. Yeah. Well, we get a little bit more before that. We have the they go, they all get in the car, and and they they track down Casanova's. Uh, yeah, Blue Rush tries to explain car. his history while they're driving to to the bowler, and she bowler, says like, bowler uh, "So what are you bowling. like, British?" Indian man who found uh, Jerusalem or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, the high speed pursuit that happens after, like during this sequence is so fucking good. Uh, they, they think that the, the, they, they find the disco boys or were like uh, Susie Izzard and, and, uh, and Frankenstein. They, they drive, they're like in a cool tunnel, you know, they're in like a New York style tunnel they, the lighting, they drive to the, the end. The camera work is amazing in this sequence. It's so good. Yeah. We start uh, backing up into the mystery mobile, for lack of a better term, and they pull right next to them. And then the fucking mystery men just bust out of the car yeah. and they start attacking the car. And it's so weird. They don't they, attack at first. They, they, they fork the car. Yeah. They, <laughs> they come out and they're Shovelers like shovelers just bashing the car. They, but they like surround it. Like they they all surround Casanova Frankenstein's car. But like while the car's coming back, I, I think like uh Mr. Furious says like he's either very dumb or very smart. Or what is he? He's very stupid or very I I don't remember what he says, but it's like the car is coming at them, goes next to them, they all get out. And then, you know, they prepare themselves and then all the windows go down and then they have like a, a standoff, like a like a Western or whatever. This part is where I'm so frustrated with Mr. Furious from the first half of this movie so far. Mm -hmm. And then this scene just like I I hate like I just hate him in this scene. Yeah, it's good character growth because you end up like you end up loving him. him. Yeah, and, exactly, yeah. yeah. But it, this is the crux of like this guy <laughs> so stupid yeah but he he also he says things that are like very dumb but also like he's still kind of polite but at the same time like yeah. well it's that he's like beating the car and singing the song and yeah, like, yeah. the shoveler is like come let's Just get go. out of here let's get come out of on and I'm just like, just get in the car, yeah. like the grandstanding. Like, it's just well, the, like, a, I yeah. think a trigger for me that I hate when people grandstand. So, yeah. like, um, but. But I mean, we also have the shoveler who is is yeah. meant to be there as our dad, yeah. right? Being and like, everybody get back in the car. <laughs> you're like, and you're yeah, supposed okay. to dislike Mr. Furious in this part. Like, you're not supposed yeah. to, uh, like, that's not part of his character growth at this point. Like, we're not on his if, side. If you, He's do, also, if you like, do feel like comically you are, useless during this too like he's yeah just he like does nothing elbow he, he he's elbow on dropping the, the roof the, of the like car. The, <laughs> but here's a little car. thing that i noticed uh when they drive off and the the villains are like checking on the car the engine they open the hood and the steam like steam comes out like the, he whatever he did he i think he got a little bit of uh his strength into that and fucked up the engine because everything else they did to the car wouldn't have affected the engine that's so kind of you i love what you've made for this movie and if that's true that's a beautiful little moment he like he right? elbowed into like a, a pipe he, well it was more of a face plant <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And it, it, it messed Jason, up the, why not the give whole... the you know credit to everybody else on the team why are you giving it to mr fear are you do you well, identify as we'll mr tell you why a little bit right i'll now. tell you why though because the fork uh the forker <laughs> blue raj just throwing <laughs> knives inside the car which like locks the doors um, bowler is just throwing the bowling ball through the window, smashing the windows. Shoveler literally just smashing one side of the car, you know. But Mr. Furious is literally face like face planting on the, the, the hood, and then the car won't go anymore. And I they thought... open up the hood and the steam comes out, and I was like, Oh, was what did he get a little bit of that? Like he got a little bit of his power he through. He did there? something, he did something. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. 
He was chewing on the like the the he he was chewing on the little thing. Well, no, I think we figured out which character Jason identifies with the most. The spleen. The spleen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did the spleen do? Oh, he stuck his butt up to the window and like blast it, and it, and like, then they oh, they closed God, the windows. Man. That's yeah. Jeffrey Rush, Academy Award winning actor Jeffrey what? Rush. What do you win the Academy Award for? I don't know. Some movie that he was in one time. All right. Yeah. Cool. 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 <laughs> What's Jeffrey next? and the Rush Bunch. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Spleen hitting on Bowler. Uh, she's like, there, there's that scene where they're just sitting around the bar, like all stoked. Well, that's because uh, it's their first victory, right? That's their yeah. as, as a team, but also I, I assume as the three team members that the like Blue Raja, Shoveler, and Mister Furious, they probably have also never really had a, a victory as no. succulent as that one no, they so talk wild. about like what their powers are too and how like they all contributed uh, you know miss invisible boy still like i look guys i can do it but and they're like okay why are you here he's also drinking um, like a shirley temple <laughs> while yeah. everyone else is getting like hammered <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty good and they edge uh through this whole movie we we get edged on what their the name of their group is and it even happens here where it's like what do we even call ourselves uh, then the disco boys confront them in the in the alleyway, and that's when Mister the the Sphinx is revealed, which they talk about earlier in the movie, and he has powers, right? Like he's Magneto or something, because all of their guns fall apart completely. Well, earlier in the yeah, movie, something when they're when they're trying to uh, figure out like how how can we make our team better, uh, the shoveler says again one of the great lines of the movie is like yeah like somebody who can shoot poison spray out of their mouths into people's eyes and blind them and like he's just like listing things but he's not listing any actual superheroes he knows and then at the end he's like well i know this guy sphinx he can like cut guns in half with his mind and so you've already had that planted there and in this moment the the disco boys are like you know they're all coming up on them in the alley and they're and he and they all go are you ready you ready and they, they do a know, choreographed uh, gun and raise them out <laughs> the choreography for the disco boys is great so jeffrey rush was already an academy award winning actor at this time because he won in 1996 for shine okay all right so he was like i'm gonna win an academy award and I'm going to do Mystery Men. And I'm going to do Mystery Men. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck not? This is it. This and then after the that, pirate, award. Pirates, 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 Pirates. Seven Pirates yeah. movies. Yeah. Uh, we get the Sphinx training montage where he's just sort of t- teaching them individually. No, but we didn't get the point where all the guys. And they're the sewing the costumes at this point, right? You see Well, them? that's after. That's, oh, like, that's coming up. And then the uh, Sphinx comes out. And this is the guy they mentioned earlier when uh, the, the shoveler was like, he can cut guns in half with his mind. And then all these, the disco boys are like, you know, nervous and they run away. And then we've got our good, uh, our, our good man. He gets onto the rickshaw and he's like, I'll kill you later, super losers. And he, and he <laughs> disappears into, into the distance. But then we have uh, like, he's just, what is he? Like, he's like an owl. What is his costume? Does anyone know what the, I don't know. I read, um, I read sort of like uh, indigenous mystic mysticism man. That's sort of what I read. That's what you read. You're like indigenous yeah. mystic mysticism man. Mystic mysticism. Um, I, read I sort of Ruby's costume knockoff of like Batman with no ears. Or like, yeah. you know, that's just... what like all their costumes feel like at the end, though, right? They, they all yes. feel like Robin or Batman. Like it's all like mask guy with like the little cloaky thing that uh, Mister Sinister kind of, or no, like oh, yeah. Mister Sinister. Mister Sinister is amazing. The uh, the thing that's so just funny <laughs> during, <laughs> during the sequence after they they get their little montage. We get the we get like you know the, I think one of the funniest jokes in the in the whole movie is uh, Mr. Furious is trying to balance a hammer on his head, you know, and then he's like, 
also have these watermelon on my on my feet and yeah. sphinx is like i don't believe i asked you to put watermelons on your feet i can't and remember I, telling you to do that <laughs> like, oh I my god we're so forgot stupid. about that he's and a luchador was... the sphinx oh, oh. <laughs> is he yes that's great yes. That's great. So That's why he looks like a luchador. <laughs> we did a luchador last month. Why the fuck didn't we even realize that, Jason? I blame um, you. <laughs> I don't read wrestling off of every single little thing, believe it or not. Uh, I you do. had one job, Jason. I had one job. I'm the I'm the <laughs> resident wrestling expert. Um, but yeah, he uh, we he teaches the he teaches Blue Raja to also like throw throw the forks like from well, under his he teaches face. everyone how to do something better except for uh mr furious who because he is, has nothing he won't learn well no i think noah's more correct is, he, is that he doesn't have anything for him to teach him he's like i don't know what to teach you because you don't have anything for me to teach it's although there. it is making him mad to hear this i just saw knowledge. your name <laughs> Mr. Fister. Yeah, that's my name. Don't worry. Mr. Fister, the sinister pisser. <laughs> I gotta piss sinister so bad. Uh did you guys catch when they were doing the firewalk moment that uh All Star plays for like one like four seconds? It's playing for like a good like three minutes, man. What are you In the about? thing that I read, they said that they only use All Star for three sections of the movie for very short amounts because they were saving it for a better movie was what he the and that movie was rat race. Was, and that movie was shrek and that movie was rat race you saw that tiktok as well <laughs> no i remember rat race from when i was a kid seeing it and they all dive into the crowd mm -hmm. and they're like dude the world was like there's pre-Shrek world and then post-Shrek world. I think Shrek I think it's changed everything. I think there's pre All Star by Smash Mouth world and post All Star by Smash Mouth world. Uh, we get them doing the costume design bits. Roy gets pissed off and leave. Uh, they all remember Heller and his weapons and armor stuff, and they go to the the abandoned amusement park. And they find him. Uh, Roy goes to the diner. He's all in his feelings. She kind of senses that. What's even her name? Like what? What is that? What is that character's name? I'll look it up while you keep talking. It's Susan, kind of ironic. It's like that Kathleen or Karen or something. But why is it ironic? Because the the whole thing about her hitching herself to roy is that she doesn't know roy's name and he's refusing to say her name oh yeah, yeah. that's why it's ironic monica it's, it's Ma. yeah i don't know if she ever says her name out loud in this movie like it just it's only in the script yeah she's kind of an unfortunate character because she doesn't really have anything to do other than to just uh put him up onto a, a point of she is girl and knows yeah. motorcycle exactly yeah <laughs> but i also like that she doesn't know motorcycle he's she like, doesn't she's like queen? What are you and she's about? like what and he's like uh you like motorcycles and she's like no i don't i don't really like them at all like well i have a her well i, I, have a Harley, I, I have like a Harley. that she likes that he when he's sad Compatible. she's like oh you're sad okay i'll, I'll try and be nice to you I don't like that immediately he's like, I'm sad and she's getting into this. So now I'm, I have to use my sadness to, as the a funny way to thing go. is too, is superhero movies like don't really exist yet in 1999, but the superhero movies that come they after do this, blade. No, that's 2000 Batman. That blade is not blade. Listen, no, the blade blade is like the next year, and You're then and then the, X Men is two thousand one. The what post I'm saying, Spider Man movie is. I'm really saying this the, that small era of superhero movies that came out in the very early two thousands, where they shoehorned in love stories because the, right. their whole the whole point was we're gonna make a superhero movie that's gonna get girlfriends into the theater, guys. Bring your girlfriends. We got love stories now. Yeah. My point is, is this movie works that her character works a lot better as a parody of that. Like this movie is a parody of movies that haven't happened yet. 
to what you were saying earlier, Steve, but also like to a crazy degree because she feels shoehorned in as like a love interest right. for no reason. I just, but that thing hasn't even happened yet. That whole Jeez. phenomenon of like the Mary Jane thing where Mary Jane isn't just like, you know, Spider-Man's girlfriend is a whole subplot in a movie that hasn't happened yet. That's interesting. I think. Long silence. Uh, uh, well, no, we're all kind of comp- we're like, what the fuck do we say to that? Um, well, I'm not. I'm not I, trying to I, be I, like provocative. I think that's just. I think that that's one of the n- cool things about this movie is it. It, it, it was arguably no, no, inarguably ahead of its time. Yeah, I would agree. But I, if this yeah, is the same like... movie, beat for beat, came out in 2005, I think it would have been. It, it would be much. Uh, more toxic. widely regarded yeah what i toxic. think it would have been yeah. more toxic because the 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 odds were a godless time oh yeah godless That's there is where, no god there was a time where Sons i thought that god. things were going to be nice for a bit and then it turned into mean weirdness for yeah i go back to those mid-2000s years. those um the American Pie era, or whatever, all of those American movies. Wedding. They definitely say the air word in that. I'm sure. Probably the anyway. As well, Jason, anyway. stop <laughs> saying the movies that. It no, was. I was long. It's a long pause because, like, you. There's nothing to yes and. Like it's a right. it's a valid point. Like it's a very. Yeah, it's valid mostly point. yes but. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes, there's no ooh. but. That's no. the thing. It's there's just, no yes. but. What? That's yes, my favorite part. Yes. Excellent uh. observation. Well done. <laughs> That's the yes and for that. Tell me that I'm good and I'm a good boy. Uh, <laughs> Heller's tools are non-lethal. Can tornado, clothes shrinker, uh, blame thrower, which is just flamethrower, That's but funny. So funny. I think this whole moment is funny. I uh, love this sequence. It just actually, makes people yeah. fight with each other, which is yeah. I mean, which is what happens all the time already. So it's it's just bringing you out you know to the top what you want to do, what you want to say. Jason, you son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, I blame you for all of the, of the atrocities put upon mankind. Uh, uh, all of them? Every single, all of every single one. I Happy birthday. Know. You're the son champ. Bitch. Well, I apologize for all the atrocities that I brought onto mankind, but I need you to know, humankind, that Jason did it before me. He's the one. He's the one. Oh. Hey, I just got a notification that you guys lost half of your subscribers. Oh, shit. <laughs> How do I get some Puku eyes? Am I doing it? Okay. Oh Back my god, your plot. eyes went in two different directions. <laughs> and not you can't take good, away the followers the that direction. don't exist. Okay. Uh, Mr. Furious. Uh, oh yeah, the girls. Uh, Monica says, "Be yourself." The Disco Boys watch on. I thought that there was going to be a little bit more of a like them immediately snagging her but that doesn't get revealed till later the the group has their moment where they're like all right you three go and and infiltrate the three of us will watch the operation three uh eyes three legs eagle comes into effect uh roy comes back i do like when he's talking to monica and he's being very real and she's finally like warmed up to him a bit and he's kind of like yeah but like Anger, fear, being furious is kind of my thing. Can I just like march back in there, furious, or like how do I go back in there and be furious? It's kind of my thing. She's like, just go back. And then when he gets back, he kind of tries that a little bit. And we kind of glossed over the fact that Shoveler and Mister Furious are like best friends. Like there, there, yeah. there should be a story that's separate where the the two of them started all of this, and they're I think that they go on adventures like together. Story- that's separate that we we can we can stitch together that story without needing a backstory like it, it exists there and like i get it you know like i i totally understand have you ever met somebody who has a good friend and then you know just watch them talk back and forth like you know you know what it, you know what it's like yeah absolutely what i did like about the, when he came back he's immediately like uh i, I lost my uh, i lost my my address book and Shoveler's like, what did it look like? You should <laughs> and uh, he's like, think about the last place that you saw it. Yeah. And well, Mr. Mr. Furious says, 
I'll tell you what the description is. Uh, it's denim. It, it says hang loose. There's a picture of a kid. In- <laughs> and I laughed out loud. His address book. I laughed out loud yeah. to that. It uh, says hang loose. That's a funny <laughs> one. No, I wasn't it's expecting denim. that. I was expecting him Picture to like grandstand and be like, it's like leather with spikes on it, but like. Yeah. Picture <laughs> of a phoenix. Roy's invited back into the party. We get we see the meeting of the villains. This is where we get all the different parties. Uh, the What was the, the Far East boys? The um, the tall, uh, the, the suits. The, what were the what, what's the women group called hot ladies like the furries or something yeah, yeah. Um, it was called like the bengal bitches or something. the <laughs> the the, the, jo- the frat boys um good stuff big Mouse tobacco party. the big frat tobacco. boys the... oh my god we've been on so long my headphone is dying <laughs> <laughs> uh it'll happen Narls barkley is part of the uh they were called like the not the not rap boys or something like that hey we got a comment let's see what the comment says hey it's space get at tim hi tim welcome you're the best welcome. cat except for my cat fight <laughs> cat fight wait no that's not what that means uh skunk humps okay. skunk hump scene that's probably the if there was more jokes that were as bad as that joke i think that this movie would suck but that joke is the a bad joke in a sea of great bad jokes that are that, that is the most 1999 joke in this it poem. really is a thing <laughs> humping a leg it's absolutely like uh, what did seth mcfarland write this scene <laughs> yeah you think that's bad remember the time i skunk humped the spleen's leg uh, they find the cap, and he uh, assists them in helping them es- in helping him escape. Uh, Shoveler does the circle things that we talked about already to see if he's uh, Lance uh, Billington. What's his name? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick. Rest oh. in peace. His I name feel like Lance, Lance Reddick. Hunt. Hunt. Lance Hunt. I feel like Lance, Lance Reddick, Reddick is like one of the movie. best actors who ever lived, and we lost it's him true. quite recently. And I still sometimes think about him when I'm going to bed. Star of stage and screen. Um. Anyway, they try to help him escape. They don't help him escape. Uh. They do that that bit with the you know trying to figure out if he's Lance. I immediately forgot his name. Uh. They hunt. vaporize Hunt. They vaporize Captain Amazing. And I wrote L O L. I wrote lol. <laughs> This whole part is maybe the best part of the movie because you... It's so slapstick, like, fast comedy, they like... Also wouldn't have to save the day if they hadn't killed the hero. <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't. Like, they but killed him. Maybe they would have because, like, what is his, what are his powers? He can kick and punch? Like, what what are his actual powers? No, but I mean, he's put away all of those other superheroes, so we know he's a uh, like a successful superhero, superhero with a yeah. with a good kill rate. Like, right. Yeah. So Deathman is dead. We know that much. And we then... just <laughs> and everyone else he put away, right? So we know he's a legitimate superhero, but that doesn't like it should be. It's like if the Suicide Squad went in and killed Batman, like. <laughs> well, this. <laughs> So it's not like if they killed Batman. This is what what I think is he obviously doesn't give a shit about them at all. Like not as soon as they right. come in, he's like, "Okay, well, uh, all right. You guys are you guys are going to get me out of here. All I need to do is explain this to you very simply and easily and that's what's going to happen." And he attempts to do that, but he doesn't do that at all well he gets frustrated with them extremely very quickly. very quickly yeah. like, okay so they do kill him but he he doesn't do anything it's to his save fault. himself yeah, it's his fault. yes that's why we don't feel bad when he gets vaporized we kind of feel good about it a little bit <laughs> it's it's like 
it's fine. And if you liked that character at all, this wouldn't land. You shouldn't but, have been watching the movie in the that first place. If staging yeah. had been any different, if he hadn't gotten so frustrated with him, if he wasn't being... And then when he throws in that, like, 16 times, like, he's not helping. Like, just say... Like, he could have just said, like, just one more flip. He's also not paying attention to what they did. He didn't give them good yeah, directions. That that was my, like, main, my main note about this entire interaction was that he died because of his inability to talk to normal people normally. <laughs> like, he, he, could, he could not figure out how to actually speak to somebody that he's never spoken to before without yeah, being like, a non- I'm a charismatic asshole. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. He's one of those characters in a thing where you perceive him at the very beginning as being this, like, much smarter, much more righteous, like, superhero character. But what you learn about him through the movie as it goes on is that he is actually just as much of a goofball idiot as the rest of them. He's just presented differently. It's kind of like uh, like Jan from The Office kind of is one of these characters where when you first meet her you think that she's like smarter than michael and smarter than the people in the office and she's sort of but as time goes on you see the cracks the more she interacts with the people but we get we they we speed run that in this scene where he's trying to just like explain to them but because they're stupid their inability to like understand what he's saying makes him his cracks sort of show and he sort of he's his own undoing because he can't just like take a minute and like try to like figure these guys out. And also his superhero ability is literally just, he works alone and he he's a little bit smarter. Like that's why he was like these, the three guys at the beginning of the movie are bumbling. They're just bumbling, trying to like do fight crime. And he already has this, like you guys were saying, like he already has like a kill record, a big kill record. So he comes in and he's just able to systematically, figure out the situation but here he's not because he's in a situation i don't know if he's ever been in but no i heard what you said this is like the suicide squad accidentally killing batman 100 <laughs> percent. that's so fucking funny to me and if it's in the snyder verse that like you wouldn't be that sad about no <laughs> because it would be shit shitty at bat fleck I, I still like wanted Batman. to see that. I do too, and I still wanted to see that movie. But like that, Batman is pretty ineffectual, especially in the Flash. I just, He's kind I of just mean the emotional anchoring that they used for that Batman has nothing to. Oh, okay, you know what? That's a different podcast. That Batman kills people too. That that's Good a Batman. completely different podcast. But yes, like if you had, yeah. a, I mean, Suicide Squad, like they kill people left and right all the time. It's like in Deadpool when they just killed all of the X Force characters. Like that's kind of what it feels like here. It's not yeah. a death that you're mourning in any way whatsoever. Mm. <laughs> but it's why they have to save the day, and I like how they just don't mention that. <laughs> like, We're uh, we are at eleven o'clock, so I'm gonna. Can I just get kind of to the end of the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heller talks about his machine. It makes hallucinations come true. Shoveler uh, gives him the pe- the big pep talk. Blue Rasha goes and tells his mom he's a superhero, and they have that egg great, salad pe- pep talk. Yeah, the egg salad pep talk, which we talked about earlier as well. Um, he reveal uh, Blue Rasha reveals to his mom that he's a superhero, and she kind of does the thing that's like I kind of always knew, which I thought might have been a little bit gay coded. I thought might have been like yeah. a little bit of yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he goes to family heirloom forks. Shoveler says goodbye to his wife. She's like, I'm leaving you. He's like, look, I- I'm taking this risk because if there is a home to come back to, I want to come back to it. And she goes, okay. Just a quick note. When she gives him the, the silverware, she's not like, cause you'll never get married. She's like, cause that's a long ways off. And I thought that was like, I don't know, a little bit different from what that scene would because normally like look 40. like. <laughs> and I thought it was just cute. Like it's yeah. it's just nice. But yes, I think the all of their interactions are cute the entire movie through. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, everything about it. I love you, Daddy. When Renee's like, I love you, Daddy. She's like, God, don't encourage your father. <laughs> Good. Uh, Roy goes to talk to Monica. The I boiled it down to basically that she's just like just be Roy. Uh, when when he gets back after having this conversation, where she just dresses him down to the point that he realizes that he's just a person and not this like 
he has a crisis of faith and just wants to leave at the eleventh hour. <laughs> at the eleventh like, hour, it, it then becomes a uh, it becomes a him movie again. Where I'm like, no, it's not a him movie. Like nothing about this is you. This is this is not supposed to be just you, man. This is everyone else's movie as well. True. When I was so a kid, every, at least I don't know how you feel now. It's just kind of like a. Uh, at that moment, you have to have some conflict so that it's not an easy victory, right? For sure. Um, and they and give then, him they give him a pep talk by insulting him it's for so like funny. five straight minutes. <laughs> it's the best, yeah. Um, every movie is a little bit Wizard of Oz, so that scene where he turns around like the Cowardly Lion because they're walking yeah. like they're they're <laughs> walking to you know how they have to like carry the Cowardly yeah. Lion towards the and Wizard. then he jumps out a window later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to say. They they suit up into their super gear. They, we get a great shot of them uh, walking in their new gear with the tank. I thought that was really good. Uh, they talk shit to Roy and get them angry. The, they drive right through the front of the mansion, which is not hero stuff. That's like they were like, fuck this. We're 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 crashing through uh, They're We're breaching. Uh they turn on a super magnet, which manages to suck up all the weapons of all the like criminals that are in that front foyer area. An I electronuclear was... magnet. <laughs> exactly. I thought it was weird that it didn't suck up their own weapons, but maybe I missed a line of dialogue that was like, our weapons aren't... They've been not... demagnetized. The same it's thought and was like, it's yeah. mistreatment. Just it's like, probably... Let it yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... They turned it off when the shoveler got out, all right? No, <laughs> yeah, but it they was were still underneath on. it. It was, it was still fucking, on. Shouldn't anything metal inside the anyway, it doesn't I matter. mean they were working with like Forge slash um the, the guy who dresses Batman, so maybe it was all worked out. Yeah. There are yeah. deleted it's rubber, it's rubber metal. What's his uh, name? Lucius Fox. Sorry. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's who. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's Lucius. Tom Waits is Lucius Fox. You're right. Yeah. Uh, there's a laser eye thing. Uh, we finally get Invisible Boy to use his powers. They, they use the power of friendship to all turn away, and he turns invisible. That's when we realize that he's not in the Invisible Man style invisible. Things can pass through him. And you have a penis invisible. joke. Yeah, he turns the thing off and <laughs> two hands or so. dick and they're like, "Wow, what a giant uh, schlong you have!" Yeah, <laughs> the, which yeah. I was like, "That was in the trailer." I remember that from the trailer as a kid, being like, "Oh, yeah. he's gonna be naked." Um, but, they use know. the clothes right. <laughs> they use the clothes ray on the babes, and the one babe is writhing, and her clothes keep getting smaller. And That's then Roy, three. Roy gets a boner. Know. I don't Roy love that. Movie. I think he says, like, my pants are shrinking or something yeah. like that. If you want to keep fighting crime today, you want to put on some shorts. Jeez, <laughs> uh, Louise. Um, but yes. That, that, that line that Janine Garofalo says there that you just said is, I think that was in the trailer as well. I think it's like, <laughs> in a world coming this summer. And he's like, ah, I'm naked. And then, yeah, what you just said. Uh, blame Ray on the rappers. The suits leader is named Big Tobacco. I already made a note of that. Shoveler beats, um, <laughs> Shoveler beats some bitches to cool action disco music is a line I wrote, but it's true. Did you notice that it was like, but it was also like action superhero music at the same yeah. time? I thought him fighting his way through seeing the shoveler. Be the music in this movie effectual. is amazing. It's great. The music in this movie is very good. I agreed. Uh, uh, spleen, uh, spleen there's last. Sorry, go ahead. In the DVD special features, there's a musical moments where you, you can click it and it takes you to the different music with the video, like the little snippet of where the music comes up. This oh, is a very wow. like MTV movie. Like that's a that's actually really cool. Like I could see the the DVD having a lot of specials. Because it's an early DVD. So it probably has it probably has and you see you have like a first run of it. So it probably has all kinds of like special shit on it, right? Not 
Yeah, it does. Like the stuff you would get on those old DVDs, random shit. Like they have like um, an interview with the cast and like that aired on like MTV or something like that. So spotlight on yada yada. I don't know. Anyway, it's very cute. It's very fun. This is what we lose with streaming, man. <laughs> uh, that's true. Actually, I think about that sometimes that like even like behind the scenes vignettes are so few and far be between now. Um. Spleen blasts the Asian gang with his fart power after getting shot in the butt. He eases up his... We also get like a really good moment here where you once again open up into the Spleen and the Invisible Boy where you're like, are they characters? Yes. They care about each other, which is like really nice. I don't know if you guys... Spleen versus... Or Spleen and Invisible Boy uh, super this... team up. I just have you know, to say this. I just have to say it. The gangs are a little bit, or like the the bad guys are just a little bit stereotyping. It's a little bit like, but yeah, these are the moving right along. Italians. These are the Asians. These are the women. These are the whites. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Like Listen, we've guys. got we've got a, a guy who farts a lot and a guy who turns <laughs> invisible, working against them, and they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job <laughs> on their own. Wait, Jason, True. you're supposed to be reading the play. You can't go away. <laughs> I'm here. Get used to it. Uh, <laughs> Bowler versus Eddie Izzard. Uh, they have a good fight. It, what uh, is Eddie? Is so is Izzard? I'm protected by the god of Hecka. <laughs> and he like has, I, that's like, a, a good. Movie. That reminds me of uh, of uh, what's the movie Kick Ass. The K Kick Ass is a little bit like this movie as well. Sure. Yeah. You sure. know yeah. where the they time. and the the fr the South Park area of the superheroism that they do and, and even to a lesser degree the anime where their their imaginations are showing one thing where it's like we're doing spells but in reality they're hitting each other with fucking like sticks like you know? killing each other yeah yeah like in the in the south park anime episode they're using actual like nunchucks and kenny takes a fucking throwing star to the eye you know what i mean like that's the thing that I that I really like about this genre of superhero. And Kick Ass does it really well. It's like these people are fighting each other to the death. If you think about it, and I am. I... Casanova has the girl. They're fucked. Uh, the thing that that I thought was funny is like Mister Fierce runs over to the wall and tries to like climb up it by just like scratching at it, but then. <laughs> Blue Raja is like, and he climbs up his forks, which yes. is so ridiculous. But oh, no, it's great! It's, it's great. It's great. And he it's gives so him nice. like a little wink, and a, it's it's a really sweet moment. Like the characters all, it's good. It's nice that they it's all kind of like each other, yeah. and like it's the that group him... hug that they do, which we're getting to. Yeah, yeah. Tim it, makes a good it... point that the Tick comics were kind of like that too, where most of the superheroes and villains were just like normal ass people, and really Arthur with his wing, Arthur's wings are like the only real fantastic thing that exists. You know, the Tick Sorry, becoming up say? a lot today. TikTok, well, get it? TikTok, <laughs> hey yo, Tick Tack Talk. We got it. <laughs> You got it. Canceled. <laughs> Banned. Uh, the so they they Mr. Uh, Mr. Furious finally hulks up. Wolverine's up. He's Hulk and Wolverine sort of combined without being either of those things. He's um, shitty Wolverine and he's also shitty Hulk. Yeah. He's shitty Hulk and shitty Wolverine. Yeah. And uh, he finally hulks up after Mr. Uh, after Casanova Frankenstein beats the fuck out of him. Uh, for a little bit with his coke nail and when he finally figures it out and gets mad they fight but what's happening at the same time is the laser's going crazy the laser actually does you know the final thing to the town it turns it into like a hallucinogenic hellscape which i wanted them to uh, like explore a little bit more like Did i want there were no people afflicted exactly that's what i mean like, like it was what are the what are the parameters <laughs> We're in the, the very, very end of the third act, though, so like they couldn't do. If you added no. anything, it would be a terrible movie. <laughs> in a fucking two-hour movie already. Yeah. I think that's my problem with the, the first act being what it is, is I want more of like the late, second act. late yes. game. 
Um, and also, like, uh, I think uh, Dave Mader was saying earlier, like, a mo this movie does deserve a sequel. I don't know if the sequel happens now, but it is a 2001 or 2002 sequel to this would have been good. Um, they they use the bowling ball to destroy the laser. They get into the, the huddle formation. Bowler uses the, the bowling ball. Oh, shit. Disco Boy is back. I'm the god of hair. <laughs> the conversations she has with her dad are really yeah. funny. And like uh Janine Crawford is just so naturally funny and naturally talented and has like a so good deadpan rhythm like, for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um and like in Romeo and Michelle's Drag. high high school reunion, she's playing kind of that same like deadpan character, but it's so perfect. But she's like she's Daria. <laughs> I would went as Daria for Halloween one time. I can I can believe you. It was very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Except to kind of talk like this. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and Beavis and Butt have to show up and be like, <laughs> diarrhea, cha cha cha, diarrhea. for my bungle. That's pretty much the end of the movie. I did like the line where the Sphinx says, uh, We're number one. All, uh, all others are number two or lower. <laughs> I thought that was really good. So then, they uh, actually say the name of the movie. Oh wait, that's a thing. Go, hold go. on a sec. Yeah, hey. you, you can it see. Is a you name can literally see me. The thing. But you can literally see me right? looking around here and trying to find it. That's when they said the name of the movie in the movie. <laughs> the whole movie. They keep being like, "What's the name of our group?" At one hour. 51 minutes and 29 seconds they finally say wait no that's good we're the mystery men because the person the the news anchor is like these mystery men have saved the day no but there's then, a comedic beat where sphinx is like they say mystery men he's like that's it we're the super squad we're the super <laughs> and you think squad. he's gonna be like that's it it's mystery i men. have it wait and then they we are known as the super squad. Ding, 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 no, the alliteration. Jason, I think it, I think if we put movie. it on, we put it on. I think the the people that love it will love it, and you know, like the people that own it will maybe give us a. They won't give it. They won't give it to us. Tell your final thought. <laughs> No, no. Final thoughts? Yeah, I got a couple more. Uh, I think that uh, that's the movie. That's the the Mystery Men film. Um, I think now it's time to go into our. Oh, here I'll do the sounds. I'm on it. Um, we did some theories. Uh, why don't we talk about a little bit of this? You had to pick one. Oh, what do you think the home, the home Alone of it all? Is the Home Alone of it all? Can someone please tell me when the Home Alone? Of I really got to know. Alone when alone. is the Home Alone what of it all? What is the Home Alone of it all? Now that's the Home Alone of it all. So to steer the conversation a little bit. I'm going to go first. My home alone of it all is them walking with their upgraded suits and then doing the final dungeon. Because it re it reminds me of like a Final Fantasy thing. Okay? A little bit. Yep. Noel, what's your home, home alone, alone of it all? Is the whole movie. Oh, interesting. Well, it's because you're like, okay. So the characters are given to you, and at that moment, I'm like, okay, what are we getting? <laughs> like, what's the home alone of it all? Um, I don't know about this movie. Like, I have difficulty with this segment because I truly don't understand it. Like, my brain refuses to understand what a home alone moment is. Uh, so it's simple. I, the home alone of it all is when you've seen Home you know, you've, Alone. You've explained when it Kevin. Me. I've watched the show. I've listened to it. I've been here, and I still don't freaking get it. It's like I just am resistant to knowing when Trevor has physiotherapy, like what days those are, <laughs> and when the Home Alone of it is. I don't understand. Like my brain just cannot. So I agree with you. That's probably that sounds right. I actually do think that sounds right. Final dungeon. Jason. Jason, I agreed with you. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Well, I'll I'll tell you, Noel, that's a that's a good thumbs up and a good 
I thought uh, Steve was just immediately going to start talking. So no, I, I walked away. Why first. Do you think that I What's was your home alone of it all, Steve? What's your home alone of it all? Thank you for agreeing with me, Noel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Noel. I'm on the ones and twos. So because uh, I think you're right. Like if that sounds right, <laughs> nailed it. Steve, what's your home alone of it all? Me? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Okay. Well, he's the home alone of it all. <laughs> I have to say, we're so close to the end. Let's. We got two oh, segments. Oh, I got it. I got it. It's the one. It's the part where uh, you know, you know, Jason. <laughs> what part? Okay. <laughs> My favorite part of this movie. Oh, wait, not favorite part. My home alone of it all of this movie is uh, when the break the, the breakup happen, happens, when uh, he has to leave. You know, when he's like, who is looking for the pinking shears? You know, like that part in the, the movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's when he leaves and then they and then they come back. That's my favorite part. Perfect. Jason, it's yours. It's time to play Guess the MP. No, I have like 10 different ones. Hello, and welcome to the Hit Game Show. Hey, did you MP double A? My name is Spleen <sighs> Furious, and I'm the hit host of this show. And the rules are simple. You have to guess three the three digits the second okay so there's five digits that you just guess the between one and nine 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 um it's pretty okay. simple the yeah no the first two digits this week are three six three 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 higher steve should you just say three 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 yeah you did that's three, what did. i was gonna pick Three, three, four. <laughs> no, lower. No, wait, sorry, higher. Sorry, higher. That'd be 568. Uh, Steve, higher. Eight, eight, two. <laughs> I'm guessing I didn't get it. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Jason. The MPAA, everyone. The MPAA. Wow. The number this week was, of course, 36821. Of course. 821. And, <laughs> and with that, it is now time for our. Uh, where the fuck is. Oh, it's time for our. Thank you. It's oh. time for our final thoughts. Just like at the beginning of the show, it is uh, a time-honored tradition around here to have our guest go first. The bowler, Noel the bowler, the Noeler. Baby bowler. Oh, I like that. The baby Noeler. <laughs> baby uh, bowler, yeah. <laughs> I'm the one your... who gave your daddy the shaft. <laughs> Hey, uh, why don't you hit us with your final thoughts? Okay. I hate all the close-ups. I do not like the the way this movie looks a lot of the time. And I didn't say that at all because it doesn't ruin my enjoyment of the movie. But I hate, like, I just hate those close-up shots of the faces. It's not for me. I know it's a particular, like, Tom Hooper did it. Also not for me then. However that the little problematic stuff um no way outdoes how fun this movie is and how much it like i can see why it's a cult classic um it's high camp uh it's everything that i like about movies you don't have to think too hard there's no no animal gets killed you don't have to like reflect on the evil world that you live in you can just sit down and enjoy a movie it is a 10 out of 10 on the rompometer 
if we're doing it out of five stars, it's a 4.5 out of five on just in all levels. It's five mystery men's out of five. I like this movie. I really like this movie. I don't think it's like when I rewatch Zoolander, I was like, this movie isn't as good as I remember it, but that's not how I feel about mystery men. It's just like childhood charm, I suppose. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you much, No. Thank you much. Thank you much, No. And you those clips of shots of each day. You just cut. What'd you say? Every poor. <laughs> High definition face. Look at these. Look at these marks on my forehead. It's from blading. It's not. This old. I... <laughs> Speaking of old, Steve. What are your final thoughts for the film The Mystery Man? I think that this is a movie that is wide open for nostalgia, but only for like, you know, people who are I guess there. I, I like I hate saying stuff like that where it's like if you were there, you would have realized, but this is one of those movies that if you were there, you would have realized. Jason, you even said that you, you you didn't connect to it in the way that you almost feel like you should have. I do. I connect to this movie in a way that I can't really explain to people other than just like showing it to them and being like, hey, right? And they're like, yeah. Or they're like, no. Or they're like, you know, maybe. Th th those are the only things I can really kind of explain. I'm trying to open my uh my letterbox review <laughs> let me just i like the this, this final thought of the movie is just like leather leather i'm trying to <laughs> hold on it's it's here well, what okay. what i was gonna buy time for you but that's okay if you got oh if you want to buy time you can it's five dollars a, a freaking <laughs> minute Oh, I was just going to say that a lot of these things come back to newer generations with streaming, like how friends came back with streaming. Um, but like Mystery Man's just not easy to find. Like it's not. That's true. It's true, but I to push, I right? to have, I sell it's the not easy to find, but I'll tell you right now, it's really easy to find somebody to watch Mystery Men with because I will watch you. I will watch you <laughs> watching. Mystery I will watch Men. you. Both of you, I will watch you both watch Mystery Men if you watch Mystery Men with me, and we can we can figure it out together. That's my uh, that's everything I have to say about the movie tonight. Jason, go ahead. Thank you, Steve. Um, I wrote this. It's such a good movie. I love how all of uh, how off the wall and bonkers it gets. They do a lot of world building for such a small scale story. I really like the elaborate set pieces and how fast how fast the city feels. How big the city feels is clearly what I meant. Champion City. <laughs> I wrote this in the past. Like in the future, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll pre-read this and say Champion City before. Anyway, <clears throat> decent score and soundtrack. With all the disco, uh, excellent ensemble cast, it's good all around. I think my main gripe is just with how I can see the first half in my mind so vividly. So this watch was kind of boring until it became new content. <laughs> but obviously a first-time viewer wouldn't experience it. I give it a 3.8 out of 5. I give this all star being in this before Shrek. It's always I made also, me angry when people are like, "Yeah, all star for Shrek," and I'm like, "No, no, it's from Rat Race." And I mean, I love Disney Shrek, Man. but I, I, and I also love Rat Race, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I also give this movie just Steve's leather jacket, leather sounds. Um, <laughs> she's still here. Louder. Thank you. It's so good. 
Um, I think that's everything uh, as far as the body of the episode and, and the outro and stuff. Uh, before we get out of here, Noel, could you just uh, plug something if you'd like to? Yeah. Uh, find me on a podcast called Stick Taps and Stitches. It is a hockey podcast right now. We're right in the middle of the uh, playoffs. So that's super fun if you like movie reviews in the summer when there are no playoffs and when we watch uh, hockey movies. So we do a little, uh, mini episodes about hockey movies. And I think we're going to do Sudden Death this time. I think that's what it's called. The <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme one. It takes place during. Yeah, it's uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. Great. I think Gary Bettman's actually in it. Anyway, stick taps and stitches wherever you find your podcasts. We are there. Me and two men. So if you don't like listening to women talk about sports, there's two guys. Don't worry. <laughs> and who wants to like realistically listen to women talk about sports? Just kidding. I don't want to listen to anybody talk about sports, if I'm being honest. That's okay. too harsh. I think that's too harsh. Uh, no, Noel. you're not. You're fine. My physiotherapist does not understand. She was like, how do people pick what sport you like or what team? And I'm like, yeah, it's a great Indoctrination, question. Indoctrination, <laughs> I think. It's probably has something to do with that. It's like religion. Um, with that, <laughs> uh, Noel, thank you for being on this episode of Hey, Did You See This One Tonight? We have covered a lot of ground. It is 1130. Ah. So three and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to uh, let everybody know that you can find us on all social media at Hey Did You See This One. Steve, do you have anything that you would like to plug tonight? Yes. I'm on a Star Wars channel. Find my voice. You can find me there. Find me. I, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just find it. Just How find can it. I plug you guys? On our podcast, on Stick Taps and Stitches, we have sound bites that Steven made. One of the sound bites is kind of a joke sound bite about a hockey team that has had like 20 years of like absolute strife. That team is no longer in existence. That's how much strife. They've moved it to a different city. So now we do not know what to do with that entire segment. <laughs> so, <laughs> What team? The Arizona Coyotes. Oh, where did the Coyotes move to? Utah. What? Yeah. I know enough about I know the enough Utah about Latter Day That's Skates. So, <laughs> you, they're not called that. Are you kidding me? They are not. They don't have a name yet. Okay. <laughs> but Latter Day Skates, the Salt Lake City fucks. <laughs> 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 that would be a good name. Anyway, for a hockey uh, team. So we're gonna need some new sound bites. If you like the sound bites on this show, <laughs> cough on over for the last time that you're gonna hear the Coyote sound bite. Yeah. yeah, my best my best pal co-host Steve is a voice actor. I'll I'll promote him for you. Uh, hit him up on all social media at uh, w- uh, uh, Waters Illustrate. Because he's an illustrator and his last name is Waters. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I'm an illustrator. Yeah, Boba uh, Blackfly. Um, like I said, you can find me everywhere as well, but I'm not going to tell you my handle because it doesn't matter. It's an important, important influencer. Uh, but hey, did you see this one on all social media? Uh, with that, uh, I think we're going to go into some other promotions that we like to do. We are, of course, a part of the uh, United Federation of Podcasts. All right, and yeah. do you know what comes along with that? Sex. Graphic Histories. Oh. Graphic Histories is a comic book podcast trivial debates trivial debates is a podcast that me and steve have both been on where you debate and it's all very trivial the x-rated x-men animated review show they <clears throat> went live tonight and they talked about the most recent episode of the x-men uh 97 show that show is very very good and listen to them talk about it live long in podcast uh, there's so much star trek i don't know what to do with it all why don't you help them help you figure it all out for you hold up movie podcast sort of our sister show where we talk about one movie for four hours they talk about three movies in a tight two emon on track it's a music podcast i'd like to be on it i know a lot about music too guys come on and of course hey did you see this one the show you're watching right now hey did you see this one a show that is on now um, I think now what we can do is, uh, oh, nope, uh, sorry, uh, 
Play the end. Play the video. No, I, I want to. I want to ask if I, we always forget to do this now. No, can you ask a very important question that everybody needs to ask each other every week? No, oh. wait, hold on. Do it again. Hey, did you see this one? <laughs> One, two, and three to the floor. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at your door. Uh, oh, he's singing Cisco. <laughs> that feels like hours ago. It does feel like hours ago, doesn't it? <laughs>